But I think the development of full artificial intelligence will spell the end of the human race. It's a flying object and we don't know what it is. I would hope somebody is checking it out. I'm glad the Pentagon is looking at this, because if it poses a threat, I want them on top of it. Well, the craft generates its own gravitational field. Can you send their lights in the sky? The internet has become the command center for criminals and terrorists. That's, that's what we're instructed to say. Roser, Area 51, alien kept deep under the ground. Welcome to Troubled Minds Radio. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and hello to all of you who may also have troubled minds. What's going on, guys? It is Wednesday night, which is one of the nights we get together and talk about all the things we're not allowed to talk about. You know what those things are. Aliens, conspiracy, the paranormal, the government, academia, 24-hour news cycle, propaganda, and the general feeling that we live in the upside down. Oh boy, we got a doozy for you tonight, uh, per usual. Uh, I always like to say we get together with our friends and talk about crazy stuff. Well, more crazy stuff for you. How about pixels in the sky? Yep, well, <laughs> now that's, what's, that's what's coming out. That's what scientists are talking about. And uh, we got an article regarding that we'll get to shortly. But before we do that, we got to uh, do a couple other things, a few other things. Explain ourselves, because, of course, if we don't, uh, uh, the, the folks that would explain for us will botch the job. So let's just do it ourselves. Which means, of course, uh, all those things that we talk about are not just those things in particular. Uh, these the, the whole idea of this show for, for a very long time now, uh, coming on four years in April, which is a, sounds pretty amazing uh, because I, I never thought it would last that long. But point is that uh, the whole idea of this was just to have a conversation, right? The whole idea was just to get people together and, uh, you know, sort of pick their brains. And, uh, you know, what do you think about some of these like uh, larger ideas uh, in the zeitgeist, larger ideas uh, in science, uh, larger ideas just just in everything, in, in life and in, in the way we live it and all the rest of this. It just becomes a very, very, very interesting conversation when you sort of take into account all the things that um, a lot of people don't really consider or talk about or any of the rest of that. And like I always say, you know, you're not going to find a conversation like this uh, at the water cooler at work because, <laughs> well, uh, you'll probably get fired for bringing up aliens at work, right? They'll think you're insane. But, uh, you know, us, we well, we have a, a little more leeway to talk about that stuff because 
because it, this isn't the water cooler. We don't have a uh, the boss breathing over our neck and, and, and uh, uh, trying to uh, you know control the speech, if you know what I mean. And go ahead and uh, use that as an allegory for uh, somebody else watching over our shoulders, Big Brother or whatever. Uh, but okay, so so that's what this is. It's just a conversation. It's uh, you know like uh, we, I like to call it drinking the maybe juice, and that just uh, that means that uh, you know a paraphr- paraphrase from Aristotle is that uh, you know it's the mark of an educated mind to consider uh, something as being true but not accepting it and again that's a probably a poor paraphrase but uh, that's exactly what this show has always been about it's just a kind of a, a suspending our disbelief and asking some of these questions as if they may be true and then considering what those implications would be so it's a it's a simple thing I mean it's uh, just because we talk about it doesn't mean uh, necessarily I believe in it or uh, ascribe to it or encourage you to believe it yourselves uh, as always uh, this is about you making up your own mind and uh, that's what this has always been so uh, so there you go there's there's sort of the explanation as we begin this and uh, as you know uh, we always do this live because well, uh, that's how you have a conversation, right? Like I always say, it's a, it's much easier to just uh, record things in a vacuum and edit out all the ums and ahs and weird pauses and all the rest of stuff. But, uh, well, uh, we just do it awkwardly. We just do it live. Uh, put my foot in my mouth probably 10 times a night and uh, encourage you to join me. And <laughs> it's not necessary to put your foot in your mouth. Uh, many times uh, the folks that call in do not, as a matter of fact. But um, you, you try and talk for three hours and not put your foot in your mouth. Uh, but, but in any case, so uh, all that said, uh, the reason I'm, I'm bringing all that up is because we are live and we are streaming on Rockfin, YouTube, D Live, and Twitter, and we're broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. And if you want to be part of the show tonight, part of the conversation, part of this discussion regarding pixels in the sky, then just give us a call 702 957 1037. That's 702 957 1037. We'll put you on the show. Easy as that. All right. Well, well, <laughs> a couple other things. What else are we doing? Uh, I am watching all the chat in all those places, including uh, Discord. So if you want to join the Discord, please do. Come say hi. Lots of uh, amazing, smart people are uh, over there on Discord and um, just hanging out, doing uh, doing uh, the things. A lot, a lot of times that conversation goes on 24 hours a day over there. So uh, a lot of people in different time zones all over the world and whatnot. So uh, just pop in and, and say hey and uh, come do that. You can go to troubledminds.org and click the Discord link and uh, we'll put you on the show. Uh, just jump in the caller queue there, and you'll you'll see where that's at over on the left side. Also, please join the Fringe chat, uh, the Fringe Discord. I'm watching that as well, and that would be a direct invite at fringe.fm slash chat, and uh, that would do it. That would put you directly in there, and uh, I am watching uh, that as well. So that, it's easy, right? It's an easy thing. And, and by the way, Discord is um, – we're not sponsored by Discord, but we always talk about it because it is one of those great programs that is bringing people together, uh, as, as many people know um, – that have been uh, kind of kind of uh, new to Discord that have ju- jumped in and kind of been hesitant. Uh, the feedback on on that from even new folks, uh, folks that aren't uh, very technologically savvy, and the rest of that is that Discord is amazing and uh, it seems to be uh, mostly unanimous. So it's just a, a chat client. It's a voice client. It's a way to share videos, and um, you could share your screen on there if you want to. Uh, you could live stream. You can share uh, pictures and everything. It's it's pretty incredible. It's what probably a you know, a new age telephone should look like instead of, well, you know, area codes like 702-957-1037, which of course is a Las Vegas area code. But okay, so I digress. Now, now the thing is this, right? As you guys know me, uh, I'm always uh, scouring the news cycles for interesting things that are happening. And this one in particular, uh, it, it seems that this seems to just keep popping up. This just keeps popping up in the zeitgeist. And uh, there's this article from Futurism.com, and uh, it goes a little something like this. This is where we begin tonight. Scientists say the universe itself may be pixelated. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. All right. Well, uh, we, we talk about the matrix and simulation theory and all the rest of that on this show quite often. And it, it just seems to more and more and more evidence. The, the evidence is mounting that, uh, well, 
What do you think? (laughs) So that's the question tonight. As we begin tonight, we're going to get into this article a little bit. But the question I have for you is, do you believe in this simulation theory stuff? Or do you think it's just another way to um, uh, maybe control people by by breaking down the old institutions and giving them like a new institution of maybe science or uh, right worship at the Church of Science instead of uh, worship at the Church of um, uh, whatever religion it may be? I don't know. Uh, That's that's the question tonight. So do you think what do you think of simulation? theory and is it real do we actually is it possible even that we live in a simulation all right that's the first question i have and then the second uh is <laughs> if so what does that mean and uh there's a whole lot with this we've talked about philip k dick in the past and his ideas of um you know, sort of you know the the duality of creation and that if, if the we do live in a simulation that uh, a, a you know a pixelated universe, as it were. Then we would um, have some sort of divine programmer, and that divine programmer uh, couldn't do it his or herself, or whatever, however you want to determine them to be. Uh, the divine programmer would actually have to have some sort of um, adversary, and what that just means is that um, you know creation in the eyes of one person, like one person's utopia would be somebody else's dystopia. And so as a result, uh, you have to have, uh, so, you know, sort of a, an adversarial process in this creation. And uh, that's that was Philip K. Dick's idea. And he wrote quite a lot about that with uh, uh, him actually being able to sort of pierce through the veil and see maybe some of these other realities, uh, these other versions of the Matrix. If you guys have seen Man in the High Castle or, uh, you know, read that, uh, that story, the short story that that was based on. Uh, there's a lot of um, amazing stuff with that. And um, is it real? I don't know. I, I wish I wish I knew the answer to that. But it is one of the, the largest questions, uh, just in not not just cosmology, uh, in, in everything. It's it's uh, it's one of those theories of everything that makes you wonder, right? Is this is this really the world we live in? Some sort of pixelated world? But in any case, that's that's what's on my mind tonight. What do you think of simulation theory? And I've always said that my ego hates it because uh, that means that I'm not me. I'm a, I'm a computer program, right? And, and then so would you be? And uh, that means that uh, our autonomy that we think is our autonomy is just built into some sort of code that's been uh, executed and uh, turned into, well, us (laughs) us <laughs> and everything around us and even even this digital construct i'm in right now this if you're watching on the streams the fake tv and all the rest of this stuff um even that even that is like a layer within a layer of these pixels right these pixels i don't know so you tell me what's up uh, benjamin i see in the chat says i call bs on it prove me wrong all right i, I got you <laughs> i got you let's do this uh, uh scientists back to futurism.com scientists say the universe itself may be pixelated. And what is gravity itself actually made of? Well, there you go. Here's a brain teaser for you. Scientists are suggesting space-time may be made out of individual space-time pixels instead of being smooth and continuous like it seems. Uh, Rana Adharaki, yes, I did it, a professor at physics at Caltech, suggested in a new press blurb that these pixels would be so small that if you were to enlarge things so that it becomes the size of a grain of sand, then atoms would be as large as galaxies. Uh oh, <laughs> what's up? Doombot says even the pixels are pixelated, right? Uh, this this article continues. Uh, Ad Haraki's goal is to reconcile the conventional law of physics, as determined by general relativity, with the more mysterious world of quantum physics. Uh, it's a seriously mind bending theory that it attempts to explain whether gravity can actually be split up into its individual components, a question that has been keeping quantum physicists up at night for a long time. Oh, oh yeah. There's more. It continues. Um, quote, sometimes there is a misinterpretation in science communication that implies quantum mechanics and gravity are irreconcilable, said Cliff Chung, a Caltech professor of theoretical physics who's working with Ad Haraki. In the statement, he continues, but we know from experiments that we can do quantum mechanics on this planet, which has gravity. So clearly, they are consistent. And wouldn't you know, of course, the devil 
as always, is in the detail. He, the, he continues, uh, Chung adds, the problems come up when you ask subtle questions about black holes or try to merge the theories at very short distance scales. In other words, if you were to zoom in on space time, would you also find individual photons which make up light according to the, uh, the laws of quantum mechanics? Or would it be a continuous spectrum? Uh, some scientists suggest individual hypothetical gravitons could make up gravity on the smallest scale, and gravitons are a component of string theory that would resonate at a particular frequency. All right, so so the question here is, uh, from the scientists at Caltech, is, so is the universe pixelated? If you were just to, to take uh, randomly somewhere out there, somewhere way out there, somewhere, somewhere deep in space, with nothing else around, and you were able to possibly zoom in on this to the quantum level and beyond, would there be pixels in space-time? Not just space, not just time, in space-time. And that's what we're talking about tonight, and uh, this is from Futurism.com, and what is gravity actually made of, of course, and what does all this mean, as always, right? I have no idea. As always, this is the question show, not the answer show, because if I had answers, it would be an easy show. Read the answers, end of show, right? But in any case, so looking to hear from you, so what do you think about this idea? This idea regarding not just simulation theory, but now we have this, and scientists suggesting that the, the unit, basically the fabric of space-time itself could actually be pixelated. And of course, that would mean that uh, in, in one case that we do indeed live in some sort of a simulation. And uh, there's a lot to this. Like, again, we've talked about in the past, uh, the simulation theory and some of the some of the rest of this, including, um, uh, you know, uh, back to that, uh, the, the, the counter player, the dark counter player and the divine programmer with Philip K. Dick. Um, that, that was a whole nother show. And that was a fascinating conversation. But there are so many angles to uh, this idea idea of not just string theory, but then on top of that, this idea of a simulation of are we living in simulate in a simulation. So uh, this is this is actually a little uh, sound clip I'm going to play for you. This is from um, uh, Dr. Gates, I believe is the guy's name. And uh, hold on, I'll find you the article as well. And we'll do that. Let's see. Hold on one moment, please. Let's just play the clip and I'll find the thing and tell you who it is afterward. This is Neil deGrasse Tyson talking to uh, one, I believe it's Dr. Gates. Listen to this. This is pretty wild as I find this article. One moment. Here you go. Partly it's taken to these very strange images that are behind your head right now. <laughs> these are pictures of equations. I've been, for the last 15 years, trying to answer the kinds of questions that my colleagues here have been raising. And what I've come to understand is that there are these incredible pictures that contain all the information of a set of equations that are related to string theory. And it's even more bizarre than that because when you then try to understand these pictures, you find out that buried in them are computer codes just like the type that you find in a browser when you go surf the web. You're saying your attempt to understand the fundamental operations of nature leads you to a set of equations that are indistinguishable from the equations that drive search engines and browsers on yeah, our computers. That is correct. So the wait, wait, I'm still, wait. I have to just be silent for a minute here. <laughs> so you're saying as you dig deeper, you find computer code writ in the fabric of the cosmos. Into the equations that we want to use to describe the cosmos, yes. Computer code. Computer code, strings of <laughs> bits of ones and zeros. It's not just sort of resembles computer code, you're saying it is computer code. It's not even just is computer code, it's a special kind of computer code that was invented by a scientist named Claude Shannon in the 1940s. That's what we find very, very deeply inside the equations that occur in string theory and in general in systems that we call, say are supersymmetric. Some of those codes are, are showing on the screen behind you right now. Okay, and so this is actually uh, the individual uh, here talking to Neil deGrasse Tyson is S. James Gate, and uh, he's a uh, again a, a physicist, of course, and he's talking about how not just are, do we have this idea of uh, the the space time itself, uh, which we saw from this futurism article, uh, talking about how uh, the universe itself may be pixelated, space time itself may be pixelated if you zoom in close enough. Uh, then there's another part of this where uh, this individual. 
Constable S. James Gate is saying, uh, oh, by the way, uh, there are actual computer codes that are out there that, uh, you know, cannot be verified in, in, in many ways. But he says that uh, this is very much a real thing. And that uh, in, in that case, what would that mean? What would that mean for us? What would that mean for the nature of reality? What would that mean for this idea of a what would you call it? A, a simulation. Oh, boy. And so, so you know, in, in the end, it doesn't matter what I believe. It doesn't matter what these guys believe. It, does, it only matters what you believe, okay? And I think that there's an interesting take on that is that uh, is, is, does that mean this would be our individual matrix, right? Our individual uh, sort of, uh, maybe we're manifesting that ourselves. Um, and I don't know. Like I said, um, I don't exactly know what's going on with this other than uh, I think it's a fascinating conversation. But think about that. Uh, we're talking about space-time and the very fabric of space-time and how it has, uh, well, pixelization. And they're they're starting to, to realize that maybe this this entire thing actually is just a big game, just a big, uh, you know, a, a video game or a simulation or both or uh, imagine Grand Theft Auto, right? Except we live in it. Yeah, well, uh, uh, in some some places in the world, it may seem like it. And so so I don't know. I think there's a lot to this. And, and again, uh, like I said, I, I always say this when I talk about str- this idea of uh, living in a simulation and the, the matrix and the rest of that is that uh, it, it, uh, my ego doesn't like it. it. It absolutely does not like it because it just means that we are not who we think we are, right? We are we are something else, um, which could be you know part of that computer code basis or or whatever, right? But um, but pretty fascinating that we're talking about uh, about uh, not just space time, but how it may be pixelated itself and how science is uh, sort of coming to realize it. What's up, uh, Hydro Host Joseph in the chat? Has got it right? Religion 2.0, and I think I think that's a fantastic way to put it. And 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 it is it is an interesting thought that uh, you know worship at the altar of science and this type of thing. And uh, it, all the while throwing out, um, you know, uh, the idea of the human soul and, uh, right, uh, maybe a greater power that's not a programmer, that's uh, possibly, you know, a, a, a god of the ancient uh, the ancient idea, right? That type of omnipotent, omniscient creator. Um, I don't know. Again, uh, like these are these are some of the largest questions in, in life uh, and not just a, on, a, on a radio show, just in general. And so I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know what to think other than and uh, my ego hates it. Even though my ego is the size of the sun, well, if the, the, the universe is a simulation, then even that pales in comparison. So so I don't know. Um, like, a, like always, this is a pretty fascinating article. And um, this other one came from a, an article called, uh, this is from the ghostdiaries.com. And uh, they're, they're saying here, we'll, we'll get into a little bit of this as we go tonight as well. But uh, the headline here is Life in the Matrix. New evidence supports the simulation theory. And this is um, a while ago, and they're talking about Nick Bostrom and the original uh, theory, the original simulation theory that's credited to the, an, a, an academic by the name of Nick Bostrom. But uh, but in, in any case, we'll, we'll get back to that. Uh, so I don't know. So what do you think about this idea that space-time itself may be pixelated? The universe in every capacity, not just us, not just the world we live in. Uh, it would explain a lot of things, though, if this was some sort of simulation. It would explain the aliens, right? It would explain why it's not obvious they're here. It would explain why uh, maybe they aren't here. It would explain lots of things if you were talking about uh, life and Earth in terms of a simulation theory. Uh, pretty good stuff. So so I don't know. Again, uh, I wish there were easy answers here, but there's not. But uh, that's okay, because I'm, I'm okay not knowing answers to things, especially when they are some of the largest questions out there. So uh, is this, as Joseph suggests in the chat, a religion 2.0? And is this a way to, again, uh, just another system of control to maybe um, bounce people from uh, from an older thought idea to a newer thought idea and uh, maybe worship at the Church of Science. Oh boy, I tell you, there's a lot to this and the conspiracies stack very, very high. And uh, as we g- grind down to the end here of the first segment, the thing is this, right? Is is this real? Is it possible that we actually live in a simulation? The the uh, From futurism here, the scientists are now saying that the universe itself may be pixelated. Okay. Now, what does that mean? I have no idea. <laughs> I uh, Heck, I don't know. But the idea is this. If we do live in a simulation, what are the other consequences for ourselves, for the planet, for the universe? 
You tell me. Love to hear your thoughts on this. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. And, well, we've got more. We've got more of these clips from S. James Gate and Neil deGrasse Tyson talking about these equations woven into space-time itself. If you want to be part of the show, love to hear your thoughts. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. This is Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange. Don't go anywhere. More quantum echoes, pixels in space, and you when we return. Be right back. Welcome back to Troubled Minds. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and we are streaming on Rockfin, YouTube, DLive, and Twitter. And of course, we're broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. Looking to hear your thoughts tonight. What do you think about this idea that we live in a simulation? Quantum echoes, pixels in space. These folks from Futurism say... The universe itself may be pixelated. And what exactly does that mean? (laughs) It could mean a lot of things. Uh, But again, like I said, it bumps into my ego. And uh, we may find out what happens when the uh, unstoppable force meets the immovable object. And uh, that's what we're talking about tonight. The idea of a simulation theory. Uh, If you're watching on the stream, don't worry about my webcam. It just continues to die. I'll just keep battling this thing all night and uh, turning it back on. But uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, looking to hear your thoughts. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. And we'll put you on the show. It's as easy as that. And um, there you go. Let's see. uh, Close that. Do this. My goodness gracious. Uh, what a pain in the butt, all this technology stuff when it's not working properly. Uh, I get it. I get why people hate computers. <laughs> I get it. Okay, so so that's the idea tonight. Scientists say the universe itself may be pixelated. What are your thoughts on that? Is it, uh, is it an easy reconciliation with uh, your, the way we live? Or is it like uh, Joseph suggests in the chat there, that it is a version of a maybe religion 2.0 in that uh, they want us to worship at the altar of science and we're just re- Reframing basically uh, reality itself uh, is to instead of uh, worship a creator, to worship a programmer. Ah, uh, you see how this is happening. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Tim, ba- uh, Tim, Tim on uh, YouTube says, if we are within a simulation, are our actions predetermined? And that's a good question. It would depend on the code, wouldn't it? <laughs> it would depend on the code. Uh, James says, it seems that to me that cheat codes for multi-billionaires probably just mean the extreme lack of empathy they appear to have for the rest of the world. Oh, let's hope that isn't the cheat code. Uh, all right, let's go to uh, Joseph in Iowa. Welcome to Trouble Minds, my friend. Go right ahead. What do you think about this? Does your ego hate it as much as mine does? Uh, I mean, I'm not. Not, I mean, the fact that we don't know we're in it makes me kind of sketchy. Like, if we were in one, it would be a lot better to know we're in one. You know, so we could push our limits and, like, stuff like that. But maybe that's part of it, not knowing you're, not knowing you're in it. And it's kind of like reality, maybe on the other side, and reality itself, you don't, there's kind of that. Or maybe that's what they're trying to teach us. Um, But I was thinking, uh, what was I thinking? So the control part, like it it would probably start off like, oh, all this science and stuff, they're fine, all this stuff. And the next thing you know, Gabriel, or they'll make up some name, will from some time put this here. Or like some something happened. They'll they'll add in science fiction to it, and they'll turn it to a really. They'll just make it into another Bible with more facts, 
And it's not even facts, just evidence. Yeah, well, again, so that, that very, very back to what you said there in the beginning there in the chat is that uh, is this that religion 2.0? Exactly. So it, instead of worshiping at uh, the old ideas of creation, this instead, this becomes this new idea to worship at that altar of science is what I was saying. And again, that's your, your thought. And I think it's brilliant. And so so the question is, though, like, to what end is it again, just to sort of wrestle control from the old world and uh, uh, make us worship at that that altar in the new world you think that's what's happening here just another control system yeah i I would think they would have very bad intentions if they're thinking simulation theories and they're coming to conclusions like that like it would be almost like they would want complete control over what your belief is you know you can't take like it's I just don't like that that's the part I don't like about it like <clears throat> like you can take the evidence and see it for yourself that's what I like yeah yeah and I mean I, I think the thing is too with like like you just described in the beginning of the call here is that you, you said if, if we're in it and we don't know right like it, it seems like we'd be a lot better off if we could know and so, well, I don't know. I, I'm not even sure you can you can prove that uh, because it's sort of like you know when you're inside of a thing like we, we we've described this before that you can't really uh, even measure it right like having like an accurate measurement from the inside of something because you still need to know it's it's n parameters and so this could be you know theologically this could be like this this not just cosmologically this this is a ton of things where this ends up becoming strange and uh i don't know i like uh, i agree with you wouldn't it be better if we knew but i mean that would be uh, you know knowing the actual nature of reality and uh and i'm not sure by the way we're supposed to know like it's supposed I think it's supposed to be a big mystery. Can you imagine if they did Maybe. some sort of a scientific experiment and and they proved beyond a reasonable doubt that we we were actually in this simulation? Sorry, go ahead. You had a thought there. Yeah, that would that would be a lot of people would be probably freaking out cuz they would be doing they would treat it like a sandbox probably. Yeah. And like- yeah, like pe- people would lose their mind, huh? Because they're not ready for that type of uh, revelation, What if that's the real thing anyway. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> what was I going to say? Maybe, uh, what, were we, what were we talking about before that? Uh, just, just the idea that uh, the altar of science and uh, the, the control systems. Yeah, I have no idea. I lost my thought. That's all right. I do it too. I do it all the time. <laughs> Welcome to my life, bro. Uh, okay, so so what do you think then? What what do you give the odds of us living in some sort of simulation here? Um, I mean, it's kind of weird. Like reality is kind of weird. Um, like if you speed up in a car, or if you're going really fast, like it kind of smears and stuff like maybe that's just our perception of it but like it is kind of it's not like we're locked into this it's definitely that's why that's why uh, simulation would be kind of a perfect for religion because it it would tie into so much of the sciences like and like stuff that they can prove because like I mean, like, I don't know. Like, you could easily justify a lot of things with simulation. Yeah, well, and explain a lot of things, too. Like, all, all the weirdness, you know, like uh, the alien abductions that, that are supposedly going on, like ghosts, things like this. I mean, that all that could just be written into a big program, right? I mean, we've got ghost games and alien games now. So, like, that type of stuff becomes a, a lot less mysterious when you're talking about the entire construct is, like, digital, right? It's just, oh, okay, well, it's just another, you know, few layers of code. Yeah, it kind of could explain my experience, too, where I, like, went into the fabric and uh, sped up, and, like, everything broke down as I sped up, and I reached to a point. So, like, maybe when everything breaks down, it's just power. 
and a vibration, you know, which yeah. would be something along the lines of a simulation. Yeah. But that could be very well not simulation, you know, like even though it's simulation doesn't mean it's like we get to respawn or, you know, a simulation as we know it. Yeah, that that's an interesting thing too, because like in, in a real simulation, like as we program them as people, video games and uh, you know like the Sims, Sim City, things like this, right? Uh, Sim Universe, whatever this is, uh, we we do build in a respawn capability. So it makes you wonder, right? What about the nature of like the larger questions, like about uh, reincarnation and things like that? Is that simply just a, another line of code that brings us back as a quote respawn? <laughs> Pretty wild idea, bro. Yeah, I think there's a lot of features. I don't think there's any like cheap like if there was if you were able to do like a whole bunch of stuff in reality, it would all be features. And you can easily ruin a game with cheat codes and they and gaming companies let you cheat nowadays because they realized that their games get you to play longer. The people who play them longer enjoy them longer, but the people who cheat they burn out because it's just like, you're just sick of it. You're like, man, like there's no point. You got no objective anymore. You're kind of just no challenge, right? No challenge. Yeah. Yeah. So, so maybe, maybe that is part of the entire situation here is that if we had sort of that, uh, that idea of a, cheat code for a simulation that we live in then um maybe it's untenable and uh like uh, people in the chat here what's going on guys i see you out there jennifer hello uh tim says uh, jesus had all the cheat codes and <laughs> is that is that the case uh people like that what about like merlin like uh, rohan has described like these ascended masters uh do, are these just people that found cheat codes to this simulation you think all oh, that's possible I think Moses, like, that's like, I don't know much about it, but like he, it sounds like he made everyone experience the ocean of like, like in your mind or something like that's pretty powerful. That's if you had that nowadays, like if you're like, all right, guys, uh, huddle up. And then you just like did some Dr. Strange stuff and everyone went out of their bodies and you could do that to anyone. I would be that would be proof of, I mean, you could, I don't even know. That would be pretty pop. You'd definitely be probably unknown to society. I wonder, I wonder if they take people like that. If there, if there is actually people that can have powers like Jesus and stuff, I wonder if they just, if there, there's like a war against them. I don't know. I don't like to think that way either. Yeah, yeah, same here. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a uh, disconcerting. Let's say I think that's probably a good way to put it. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, but but do you think it's possible? Do you think we're just kind of uh, talking talking out of our butts here, or you think that there is a chance that we actually live in this some sort of simulation? Yeah, it could be possible. And like someone like who has all the cheat codes, they could be at war against them because they respawn. Imagine if you have memories of like everyone on earth going against you for like your entire, every time you come to earth, you're like, dang, man, they still hate me. <laughs> they still hate yeah. me. <laughs> Even on a respawn, they still hate me. <laughs> they, they hate, they hate this multi-generational. <laughs> uh, geez, uh, geez. Uh, you're the best, bro. I appreciate the phone call. Um, I'm with you. I, I don't know. I, is it possible that this, we possibly live in a simulation? Yeah, I'm going to say it's possible. And again, my ego hates it, but uh, well, my ego doesn't make the rules, does it? <laughs> You're the best, bro. Uh, yeah. Joseph here has a YouTube channel called Hydro Hose. Check it out. Links in the description. He does some original music and some other stuff. Uh, thanks for always being enthusiastic and calling into the show and having great ideas, my man. You are the best. We'll talk to you soon. Have a great night. Yep. There you go. Easy as that. Uh, appreciate you uh, testing out the phone and uh, getting us going tonight, Joseph. If you guys want to be part of the discussion, we're talking about this idea that uh, the this is from Futurism.com, and this is just a couple days ago. Uh, scientists say the universe itself may be pixelated. Okay, well, hmm, <laughs> hmm. Yeah, interesting. Uh, oh, Charlie over on Rockfin says, uh, eat enough magic mushies, 
and you see the pixels. <laughs> you see the pixels. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Maybe, right? What's up, Barb? Uh, I see you over there. Uh, I see you in the chat on uh, Rockfin. All right, so so that's what we're doing. We're talking about this tonight. Scientists say the universe itself may be pixelated, and they're talking about the actual uh, fabric of space-time itself, which is strange in the sense that, uh, you know, we talk about, like, maybe ourselves, of course, as part of this construct, you know, a conscious construct as Earth itself, because, of course, it's, it's the home for all of the consciousness here that is as far as we're aware in the, you know, quote, known universe. But uh, again, there's even those ideas are, uh, you know, kind of maybe not even accurate. But but I think that stuff uh, kind of plays in that uh, some of the stranger things about the universe, uh, they may, they start to make sense in terms of an actual, uh, you know, uh, again, back to the ghost phenomena, things like that, back to uh, UFOs or right, uh, d- dimensional spirits or whatever you want to call them. It seems like this, this idea of a simulation would be able to easily easily just to, you know, code those things in because then uh, all things become real or uh, the the uh, easily made real how about that i think that's the best part of this so so i don't know um you know uh, talk speaking of uh, how we live in this wild time you know may you live in interesting times is that uh we, we do and things things seem to be crazier and crazier every single day uh maybe i think it's weird too the more you watch the news the more you think the world is nuts but uh what happens when you stop watching the news does the world stop being insane or does it just continue being insane without you, without your participation? But anyway, uh, yeah. So lots going on here, and uh, I'm not really sure. I don't really sure. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I don't know. Of course, if I did, like I said, easy answers. I just read the answers. End of show. Uh, a lot less fun that way. So again, uh, looking to hear your thoughts on this. Seven zero two nine five seven one zero three seven. That's seven zero two nine five seven one zero three seven, and we'll put you on the show. Easy as that. Click the Discord link at troubledminds.org. org. Uh, there's more here, right? So not just uh, we were. Hearing this um, this clip from um, this this uh, physicist named uh, S. James Gate, and uh, he's speaking with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Let's hear part two of that, and we're we're talking about, of course, pixels, pixels in space time. We're talking about uh, this simulation theory, and do you think it's possible that we actually live in some sort of simulation? So let's go part two on this, and uh, we'll keep on trucking. Again, love to hear your your thoughts, 702-957-1037. Click the Discord link at troubledminds.org. Here we go. They don't look like codes, but these pictures, which we call adinkras, are graphical representations of sets of equations that are based on codes. That in the description of our universe... That it's a supersymmetrical universe, which we were going to test in the LHC. If you believe that description, I can show you the presence of these codes. That's my statement. Do you have any um, predictions in your ideas or any ways to test any of your ideas any more than, say, the guy over on the screen? (laughs) The work that I'm doing is, in fact, so theoretical that we we don't understand yet whether it is even possible to complete the program. We have found these strange graphs. We know that they are equivalent to equations, and we have found in these equations computer codes, and so that's where we are right now. So I cannot give you a prediction. This work is less than two years old. But but it's not that you never, you recognize that you will need a prediction in order to. As I, someone recently asked me, said, well, you don't care about experiments, do you? (laughs) And I said, no, that's exactly wrong, because you see, I have spent my career as a researcher worrying about supersymmetry, I would want to see an experiment before I shuffle off this mortal coil so that I'd know that I did not waste my entire professional life. Okay, so, uh, well, the theories, right? The mathematically, uh, it, it seems to add up, but this individual S. James Gate, they're speaking with Neil deGrasse Tyson, uh, was actually describing this as uh, it is code. There is uh, decipherable, maybe not decipherable, but uh, you can tell there is some sort of code happening regarding uh, the, the, the nature and fabric of the universe itself. So that in particular, like I said, it's a, it's kind of a wild idea that, uh, you know, we've talked about it, you know, maybe Maybe not a wild idea for wild idea for troubled minds types because well, you know this is the type of stuff we think about all the time. But then once you start kind of wrapping in these ideas of quantum echoes and these pixels in space, which we'll get to quantum echoes and uh, quantum echoes in a moment here. But the, the, just those whole ideas will start to make you. 
Hmm. Maybe scratch your head. Maybe uh, maybe believe in that uh, worshiping at the altar of science. I don't know, but uh, let's let's do this. Let's go to more of this. Um, here's another one. This is from uh, Sim. There's there's actually a thing called uh, Sim Simuology. Can you believe this? Uh, it's it's uh, it's becoming now we're talking about like sort of worshiping at the the altar of science. Now this is from uh, religionnews.com. It says author. Christopher Faust, uh oh, <laughs> but it's F O U S T, discovers evidence we might be living in simulation, right? And so he, he runs something called the Simuology Institute, which seems absolutely wild, but it's a research organization at the intersection between spiritual beliefs, mysticism, and scientific knowledge. And uh, they, they say they've discovered evidence pointing toward their theory that we all are living in a simulation. A founder of the Institute and author of the new book, Simulology Volume 1, Christopher Faust is a virtual reality developer with over 15 years of programming experience. He established the Institute as a resource to explore intelligent thought patterns within virtual code, which he discovered from years of working in the industry. With one book in publication and more on the way, he dedicates his efforts to the study of simulology and religious, historical, and technological research. Uh, quote, when we talk about living in a simulation Everyone immediately thinks of the Matrix films. However, belief in simulology is far more complicated and mystical than that, says uh, Christopher Faust, the simulology author. He says, simulology does not denounce God, nor does it reject religious belief the way science does. On the contrary, it supports a further understanding of our existence in search of the great mystery bestowed to this reality. And uh, did you know, did you know, there's actually something called simuology. Is that how you say simuology? And uh, there's this website if you guys want to check it out. Uh, Links are in the description below as always. But uh, a pretty wild idea here that, uh, again, maybe this is not about uh, sort of, uh, you know, canceling God, as it were. Uh, Maybe that's, you know, you can look at this in a different manner in that uh, it's, it's just a way of maybe understanding Understanding whatever that construct is in a better way, and I, I like the idea. I like the idea here regarding you know maybe maybe science and religion can hold hands and not be so so uh, so at odds with each other. Right? I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing. Um, but as always, uh, what are your thoughts? Seven zero two nine five seven one zero three seven. Taking your phone calls as we discuss simulation theory, but not just simulation theory. We do that all the time. But in this case, uh, we've got a, a new article uh, and that came out in the last uh, at least uh, this past month here uh, scientists from futurism futurism.com scientists say the universe itself may be pixelated and so pixelated well what does that even mean so it ends up uh, that it's not as easy as that is it uh, we're talking about space time itself being pixelated but if that's the case then what are the other implications and that's what's on my mind tonight as usual just another random Wednesday night on troubled minds talking about uh, crazy stuff Ah, uh, crazy troubled mind stuff, because why the heck not, right? And uh, that's what this is about. So um, uh, we got more here. Uh, let's see. What else? What else? Uh, we got more of this uh, Neil deGrasse clips we'll play a little bit later. But okay, so that's the idea tonight. I, I don't know the answers here. And just remember, this is not uh, the answers show. This is the question show. And it doesn't matter what I think. It matters mostly entirely, not mostly, and it matters entirely what you think. So uh, if you want to be part of the show, love to hear your thoughts on this. What do you think the odds are we do live in a simulation? And what if they were actually able to conduct some sort of scientific experiment to prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that we live in this actual construct that is a simulation. You tell me. You tell me. One more time. 702-957-1037. We'll get, we got James. We're going to get to him just after we take the break here. Uh, we got another phone call coming in. I see you there. Robert in Pennsylvania. Uh, he's coming in as well. So, so well, we got a couple calls coming up, but uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. The thing is, well, like I said, my ego hates it, but uh, my ego's not in charge, and uh, that's just the way it is. So, uh, how does your ego feel about the idea of you not being yourself, but instead you being some sort of actual computer code. 
Oh boy. Oh boy. There's a lot here, isn't there? And if you want to be part of it, one more time, 702-957-1037. And we'll put you on the show. We got uh, James and Robert lined up. We'll get to them in a moment here. But also looking to hear from you. It's uh, it's one of those things. It's a conversation between us. I always say this and I mean it. I'm me. You're you. But together we're us. And once we share ideas and uh, in a respectful dialogue, uh, more ideas seem to seem to compound on each other and make all of us just a little bit smarter. And that's a good thing. Sharing is caring and learning is the best. And one more time, 702-957-1037. This is Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange. Don't go anywhere. More simulation theory, quantum echoes, pixels in space, James, Robert, and you when we return. Be right back. More Troubled Minds on the way. Radio. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and hello to all of you who may also have troubled minds. What's going on, guys? It is Wednesday night, which is one of the nights we get together and talk about all the things we're not allowed to talk about. And that's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific. And you know what those things are? Aliens, conspiracy, the paranormal, the government, academia, the 24-hour news cycle propaganda, and the general feeling that we live in the upside down. Taking your phone calls tonight, as always, at 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. And we're talking about simulation theory. Uh, just this past uh, month here, uh, scientists say from Futurism.com that the universe itself may be pixelated. May be pixelated. Well, and what is gravity itself actually made of? So some pretty wild ideas here, and it seems that the more um, the more maybe scientific uh, evidence comes to light regarding things like, uh, you know, the smaller and smaller particle collision stuff going on at CERN, and, you know, we talked about the Higgs boson, the God particle, and uh, muons, and all the rest of this stuff, right? Uh, there's a whole lot, it seems to be a tiny, tiny world, uh, the the actual uh, micro world, right? The, the quantum physics world, where uh, things seem to be maybe more like pixels and less like, uh, <laughs> less like many other things. And so uh, it does sort of lend to the idea that maybe we do live in some sort of a simulation. And looking to hear your thoughts on that tonight as uh, we discuss this. And again, remember, this is a nonlinear, open-ended, wherever you want to take this. We've, we uh, discussed the, uh, some ideas tonight regarding 
morning. Is this a way to sort of wrestle away uh, the the idea, the old ideas of religion, and sort of maybe uh, put put front and center the the Church of Science? And uh, if, if you can convince people that we live in a simulation, then well, then you can maybe explain away God and things like this. I don't know. Again, uh, another level of conspiracy when you talk about this stuff. But uh, uh, great stuff again. Thanks to Joseph for calling in that last hour and uh, getting us uh, kicked off here. Appreciate it very much. Uh, let's go to Robert in Pennsylvania. Welcome to Troubled Minds. You're on with Mike. Go right ahead, sir. Hi. Um, I was planning tonight just to sit back and, and listen. I'm hearing myself over the phone, by the way. Okay. Um, to listen and, and, and try to avoid calling, but I failed. Uh, <laughs> failed. What did John Lennon... What did John Lennon sing? He, he sang a song that said, uh, nothing is real and nothing to get hung about. Strawberry fields forever. What did he know? Ah, that's a good question. What did he know? He knew something because, you know, he, he, he obviously had some idea that none of, the, none of this was real. And, and and he put it into music. I remember seeing a video some time back, some years ago. All right, and, and what it was is it was a it was it was a, it was a Salvador Dali painting. And what this video allowed you to do is to step inside the painting and walk around on it. All right. Now, I, I, this is not VR. This is just a you know, you move the, the little cursor and you move through the through the painting. Um, now we can do that with VR. We can put on these VR goggles and and, and see a, a painting and and actually think we're stepping into it and walking around. Okay, Me- meaning that. Is is that a way to break out of this matrix, or is it a hint or proof that we're living in it? What what does it mean? I really have no idea. Anyway, I, I just made some notes here, so I, 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 so in order so that I don't get all over the place, uh, it's just as easy to believe we live in a simulation as it is to not believe it. Okay, that makes sense um, to me. You can t- and and it's possible we live in. If we do, we live inside a computer game. Maybe we'll call it creation. And when we die in the game, you know, there's this big game's over, game over, until we're <laughs> recycled back into the game as a different avatar. Is that what life is? We die, the game's over, and then we go through reincarnation, recycle back into the same game as a different person? Yeah, it could be. It could be. And, and that's known as a respawn. That's what Joseph was talking about. So so in, in a video game, uh, when you get the game over, splash screen or whatever, you start over. Uh, but in, in that case, the, the code is sort of uh, linear in that you're the same character and it's the same space and the rest of that. But if you have a more complex code system, then you are correct. Then it could be entirely recycled as part of just a larger uh, construct itself. And uh, wouldn't that be uh, considered reincarnation of a sort? Yeah, yeah, and but but if 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 we're inside a computer game, then who's holding the game console and pressing the buttons? That's a good question. <laughs> That's a very good question, <laughs> and I and I I don't know uh, because that means somebody would be controlling us, right? Unless, of course, we are uh, in some way uh, autonomous, uh, where you don't need anybody pressing the buttons, right? Maybe maybe you don't. don't maybe know. it's you part can, of the code. I think you can tell. If if this if this was if this was true, you, I think you can tell when the game player is getting bored with the game when it produces chaos into the game to shake things up, like chaos, like nine eleven, endless wars, even a President Trump who then is defeated by a disoriented and senile old man who poops his pants <laughs> just to make. To try to to juice up the game because he's getting bored, 
and, and and maybe that's that's the key. Maybe it's some bored thirteen year old boy who's running this game, <laughs> and we think he's God. Yeah, it could be, and so so uh, that's what happens. Actually, if you've ever played any of those simulation games, uh, it, it happens that way. So so uh, they have you know like a a time structure thing where you could speed it up or slow it down. You know, so you slow down time, and then you you know make make the necessary changes. You kind of uh, uh, actually in like uh, touch the world and do the things and set up the parameters the way you want it to be, and then you can speed up time, right? And it it goes fast so you can see these things start to culminate uh but but what happens is if you don't do anything and just let it roll like that uh you do end up with these bizarre things happen that are sort of unexpected so maybe maybe you're right maybe maybe the world's getting crazier because somebody out there is no longer interested in the game well you just you just said it doesn't everybody just have kind of a sense that the world has gone on you know completely bizarro land you know there used to be some kind of stability uh in 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 this life all right that seemed to just this this just seems like the, the 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 steady pace of life and the normalcy of life just took and got just tossed you know, when when we went from 1999 to 2000, it's like somebody reached in there and just decided to, like, let's shake this up a bit. Cause it, and you're right, it, it just seems like everything's so unnormal from what used to be normal. It's getting worse and worse and worse. And maybe that's what's happening. Maybe the uh, there's uh, nobody at the wheel, <laughs> and uh, and which which actually would not be good for the the near future because that would mean well, uh, things are going to go more off the rails, aren't they? Mm-hmm. And I'm going to ask you a question. This will be the last one. All right. What if proof beyond a doubt was discovered that we indeed do exist in a simulation? What would be the consequences of knowing that? Uh, to me, I, so I think to me, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a pretty grounded dude in many ways, and uh, I don't think it would change a thing. Uh, I, I think for me, unfortunately, I would just, you know, like uh, I, w- I would want to be the best program I could be, even if it was code or it was built into me to be that or to not be that. Nothing would change. I would still do my best to work hard you, and be the best person. You wouldn't see yourself as an, as artificial. I mean, I would, right? Like if that was the reality of the situation. But again, still, you know, you punch me and I bleed. You know, you cut me and I bleed, type of stuff. So, it, you know, it, even still within that construct, I think ourselves we're still inside of it it's like you know we can't step outside the computer so if this is what we are then this is what we are you know and i and i don't think that uh, it would change a lot for for me and many people probably not but i think i think the world at large and, and i think that's probably your greater point here is that the world might freak out uh, like that like if this was proven beyond the shadow of a doubt i think the world would freak out man i think i think 100 percent. yeah the, but the, if we if we if we come to understand that we are a simulation, all right, it takes away the whole veil, all right? It takes away what, what, uh, all boundaries. It means that we could do things, all right, almost magical, that not knowing it prevents us from doing. That's true. That's true. And so, so some of those, uh, you know, ideas of superpowers suddenly become real. And maybe there are actual cheap things out can, there. It means you can walk into a painting. Yeah, right. Exactly. Or into the mirror. You can walk into, <laughs> you can walk into a movie screen, you know. Right. You can, uh, maybe that's what, anyway. Um, if, if the universe is a simulation, or, is it, is all this... The universe is a simulation, just subliminal, a subliminal message put out by the uh, evil powers that be over time to get us used to the idea so that when they do the great recess final, final step, which is VR, that we'll be able to accept it? Maybe. 
<laughs> uh, but they spent time. They spent all this time gradually putting the message across to us that perhaps we are a simulation. So it's like saying we think UFOs are real, you know, and then getting us used to that idea so that we don't, you know, so that we react in a more mature way when it happens. I'm saying all this talk of a simulation, it's like when you say asteroids are coming, when you do a thing and you, and you go into a rant about, every, you know, clickbait, asteroids going to come near Earth, all right? The idea is to get us used to that. The idea is to, and that they're, now they're doing it for clickbait, it seems to me, the same, same type of direction with all this, the universe is a simulation talk. Are they trying to get us used to something? Or, yeah. or, or, or tenderize us so that we'll accept their ultimate goal? You know, with, with virtual, turning us, uh, uh, you know, the whole virtual reality thing, I, which I don't understand why that's their last goal, why that's number five. But they want to make VR, you know, the final goal of the reset. Yeah. Pretty wild. Uh, it, it, also, in this website, too, this simuology, I was talking about this individual. I found it hilarious that if you scroll down to the bottom of the website, they have a countdown to the Great Reset of 2030. <laughs> so, so maybe. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. It's a, it, I just can't in, wait to see. What, I can't wait to see what James says about this. Okay. Just, just before you go, the countdown is 412 weeks, 5 days, 3 hours, 38 minutes, and 50 seconds to the Great Reset of 2030. Robert, you're the best. I I appreciate the phone call. Okay. Okay. Thanks much. <laughs> Have Bye. a great one. Have a great one. That's Robert in Wonderful. Pennsylvania. A good stuff. He's he's got a book called uh, Stories from a Fractured Mind. He does not call for me to plug his book. I just do because he's a good friend and uh, he's a good dude. I read the book and it's pretty amazing. So there you go. Uh, but uh, it, oddly enough, Simuology. You just scroll down to the bottom of their website, and they have literally a countdown for the Great Reset of 2030. <laughs> Seems strange, does it not? Uh, the Great Reset, you got to love it. It works its way into everything. So uh, we got a couple phone calls. I'll see you guys there. We got Brett and Jennifer. We'll get to you guys shortly. Thanks for being patient. Let's go to James Salcedo of Salcedo Paranormal. What's up, brother? How are you? Let's uh, get you on, and uh, you're already there. What's up, man? Welcome to Trouble Minds. How are you, my friend? <laughs> well, I, I feel so much better now that we have a, a timeline and an actual date to look forward to here. Yeah, right? That's just going to make everything so much better. <laughs> exactly. Uh, 412 weeks, 5 days, 3 hours, 37 minutes, 48 seconds, and ticking. <laughs> It's lighted at the end of the tunnel. Wait, what is that light? Hmm. Heck yeah. yeah. Heck yeah. Uh, so what do you think here? Uh, what about cheat codes, video games, living in the Matrix? What the hell is really going on, James? Help me figure this out. Oh, <laughs> well, uh, I have no idea if I'll be able to do that at all. But um, I had, like I said in the chat, I have one experience I'll just go into real quick. And then um, just a thought on that, the, the codes idea. And that's funny because someone in the chat mentioned um, seeing lines or someone had seen lines after, I guess, taking some kind of a uh, substance, <laughs> um, psychedelic substance. Um, but the thing about lines and even the things about, thing about pixels, there was this one time I was standing outside, middle of the day, um, you know, blue sky, there were clouds, but not, not a lot, and I happened to look up, and not towards the sun, because, you know, that, that hurts, um, but I, I saw, it looked almost like black dots in a grid-like pattern up in the sky. Like, my entire field of vision, though. Okay. Interesting. So and so it's almost like, by accident, you were able to see those pixels, huh? I'm wondering if it was either the pixels or if it was the frames of the pixels. The actual, like, almost like a TV that has the, the you know, the, the cell for the pixel to be in. It was almost like I was seeing the grid work of that instead of just the pixels. Ah, uh, the framework of the Matrix, James. Now you've done it. Now you've really done it. <laughs> what, so, so, but, so, so what brought that on? Was it a random thing? What happened? Yeah, it was random. I have no idea. I'm, I'm wondering if maybe it was because I was just kind of 
um, staying there, not really thinking of a lot, just waiting for. It was a nice day outside, so I decided to wait for a ride, you know, outside, and and um, just happened to look up, and yeah, it was really odd. It lasted for a couple minutes, and then it, I looked away, and it, like I looked back down. It was easier to see it when I was looking up at the sky too. Okay, um, that's pretty wild. So okay, yeah. so so what's the conclusion there? Do you think it is? Uh, what are your odds that we do live in a simulation? I don't know. Um, as good as anything else, I'd say at this point, as any, anything else, paranormal or supernatural or whatever, um, we don't know. But uh, I, I thought that the example that Joseph gave of, of the, the the codes of the features was interesting, and I had a kind of a um, something to say about when he mentioned that games, uh, you know, they stopped doing the cheat codes so much. Um, and because they found people would get burnt out because there was no challenge. But what I would say to that is sometimes certain games, depending on your skill or your ability, they're so hard, you need codes to even get through the game to see what's in the game. Right. So, so uh, built in, uh, so, so uh, who knows, maybe it's part of, part of that construct. Uh, do you think that uh, somebody in particular, like maybe Elon Musk, do you think he has cheat codes for this reality? Well, I don't know. It could be. I mean, I already kind of, I already kind of put out my uh, idea about people and at that level of um, economic level of society anyway, in the chat that they're, but anyway, that's kind of that's that's kind of dark. I don't know. But um, <laughs> damn it, James! Now you've done it twice in the same call. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but no, I I just think that maybe some people out there, and maybe this is what how some people manage to do amazing things is they start wondering about these things, and if there are ways to do these things, and if there are, you know, quote unquote cheat codes, and they start looking for them. And so that's how they find them. And, um, you know, it, it doesn't, it, do, it has the opposite effect of them getting burnt out on it. It makes them more interested in what's going on. And yeah, that's true. Going. So I, so I guess it depends on the player of the game, right? As they say, don't, don't hate the player, hate yeah. the game. <laughs> don't, don't hate the it's, player. It's, uh, it's interesting because everyone's different. Everyone, you know, everyone likes different levels of challenges and, and it has different levels of different kinds of abilities. So I just had to put that out there because I thought that was really interesting. Awesome. Good stuff. Good stuff as always. Uh, so so uh, then what do you think about this whole idea? Is it, uh, is it coin flip? Do you think it's good odds, bad odds? Uh, again, you said we don't know. But if it's up to you and you're making the decision, uh, what do you think? Uh, do, do you believe that it's possible we live in some sort of matrix? Oh yeah, I think I say I'd say coin flip. I, I, I have a. Um, I, I feel like until it's, it's proven completely that anything is totally impossible, then that means it's possible, which means, you know, that's why we we don't know. That's. So yeah, I think it's possible. So maybe. I like maybe. Yeah. I'm okay with maybe. Right on. I yeah. appreciate it. The good stuff. Uh, just about out of time here. Uh, James here has a podcast called Salcedo Paranormal. Uh, please check it out. He does paranormal stuff five nights a week, and uh, he's going to be on the on this this show here, uh, Troubled Minds, as a co-host on Monday as well. We got some interesting things to talk about then. So uh, James, a good friend of mine. Thanks for uh, spending your time with us. Thanks for the amazing phone calls, and you're the best, brother. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Have a good night. You too, man. All right. Simple as that. If you want to be part of the show, 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Uh, Tim in the chat says, the cheat code is a way of feeling. Uh, could be. I see you guys on the on the phone there. We're going to go to Brett, and then we'll go to Jennifer right after him as soon as we come back from the break. So hang tight. I appreciate you guys being patient here and letting everybody have a turn. And we're going to just uh, keep on trucking, doing our thing, and uh, talk about simulation theory quantum echoes and pixels in space because well uh, that's apparently that's what science is trying to tell us and so what is the uh, the larger uh, implication here i think there's quite a lot to it and that's what's going on so if you want to be part of the show one more time 702-957-1037 that's 702-957-1037 and we'll put you on the show got a couple calls coming up so don't go anywhere more trouble minds on the way and this is the deal right we're talking about 
simulation theory. What are the larger consequences? Do you think this is possible? What odds do you give it? Coin flip, like James said, something else, something different, something larger. You tell me. Love to hear your thoughts. One more time, 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. This is Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange. More Quantum Echoes, Pixels in Space, Brett and Jennifer when we return. Be right back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Troubled Minds. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and we are streaming on Rockfin, YouTube, DLive, and Twitter, and we are broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. If you want to be part of the show tonight, give us a call at 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. We'll put you on the show. We're talking about base reality, Uh, talking about living in a simulation, quantum echoes and pixels in space. seems like more scientific information we get, it seems to suggest the possibility that we live in a construct, sort of like a digital construct, a matrix of sorts. What do you think about that? Does it hurt your ego like it hurts mine? 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. And we'll put you on the phone just like this. Sorry, Jennifer, again, for uh, making you wait. Let's go to Brett in uh, not sure where. Brett, welcome to Troubled Minds. How are you, my friend? Go right ahead. Good. How are you? Uh, thank you very much. Doing well. Uh, can you hear me clearly? Loud and, loud and clear. Loud and clear. Uh, go right ahead. So wh- what are your thoughts here? Uh, uh, thank you for calling tonight. Do you think it's possible we live in this uh, some sort of simulation? Definitely. Uh, I mean, there are, there are a couple of perspectives that uh, I've read about uh, that can be taken from or to that to that question, one is it like a computer simulation, or is consciousness itself like a dream simulation that we're all living with inside of, a sort of a mutual hallucination? Uh, that's that's a kind of a deeper subject, but I think that it's definitely possible we're living in a simulation. Uh, if it's either one of those, uh, I think the latter has more. I think the consensual hallucination is more of a likelihood than the computer simulation, because computers are are part of our simulation, are part of our reality, so it's basically our frame of reference for how we would uh, struct words about a simulation. So I would think it's more like a consciousness-based uh, simulation. Gotcha. Okay. That that seems to make some sense to me. Um, so so uh, what about this idea of a cheat code? Do you think it's possible that if that you know if that's the case, even maybe lucid dreaming, something like that would be sort of a cheat code in the dream world? Is there such a thing as maybe a cheat code in the real world? That is an excellent question. And yes, I've given that. Uh, there are, I believe, there are cheat codes. I believe not that I have exclusive access to cheat codes, but I believe I have. Uh, some inkling of what cheat codes might be not again, not nothing concrete, but I do believe there are cheat codes. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, and that involves altered states of human consciousness and synchronicities. I think those are the ideal and sort of the premium cheat codes, uh, ch- changing one's mind and opening oneself to new possibilities is essentially the big God mode cheat code. I believe, uh, in our reality, uh, essentially taking your perspective and opening your mind to new reality brings in new information, brings in new possibilities. And it's really about possibilities or it is really the, uh, the chance of new possibilities that I think, uh, alters reality fundamentally or, or makes it seem more in a simulation itself. So, uh, yes, I do think there are cheat codes and I've found those cheat codes littered throughout literature and a bit in the occult, uh, metaphysics in my studies. Uh, so I would say that, yes, there are uh, definitely cheat codes. Okay, fantastic. So so what are the odds, you would say, just given uh, the conversation tonight, what you've heard from some other people, what you've done in your own research, and just uh, the, the general feeling of your life? Is it kind of like James said, sort of a coin flip situation with uh, maybe, or do you think it's a kind of a long shot that we actually do live in a simulation? Uh, that's a great question. Again, I would say it's probably 90, 10, 90% likely that we're living in a simulation, 10% we're not. There's always room for doubt. Nothing's absolute, including that itself. You know, the, the rule, there's nothing that's absolute. So I would agree 
uh, I would agree with the statement that we almost certainly are living within some sort of uh, hallucination or uh, simulation or mutual uh, mutual reality that is unreal but feels quite quite concrete. I think there's a very good chance we're living in that reality. Gotcha. Okay. I, Fantastic. I mean, for me, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, go, ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay. Your call. All right. Uh, I think that uh, reality itself is sort of a, just the concept of what reality is. Like what, what is consciousness? What is, what is considered normal and real and modern and now and consequential? I think the considering of that proves that, it's a simulation or at least indicates that it's a simulation because it can change so quickly. It can, it's up to debate. It's not, there's I mean, evidence is subjective in some senses. Uh, so I would, I would say that there's a very, very strong possibility we're living in a, uh, a, a reality that at its base level is uh, illusory, illusory, if that word makes sense. Yeah, no, it, it makes a ton of sense, and I, I don't know. I think that um, me personally, I'm I'm uh, I'm coin flippy here. I'm more like James. I'm not sure. It's uh, like a, everything feels real, everything seems real, but that doesn't mean it's real, right? <laughs> so, so I don't know. Like uh, like I said, my ego really hates the idea of uh, us being some sort of a computer program. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna battle this one off as long as I can because uh, I like to be an individual and not somebody's idea of a, a sim or something. <laughs> understand i can relate and appreciate that yeah uh i think it's when you start looking like I, the last caller said looking for cheat codes and finding them i think that's a very important point i think that you can find and you definitely can search for cheat codes and when those when the search begins uh things begin to change it's almost like the actual intention to find a, a loophole or to find a, a backdoor or to find some sort of cheat code opens the reality that we all live in or that one personally lives in to the potential of finding the codes and let alone the, re- the, re- the, the revealing of the world we live in as being a simulation. That's just my opinion, but I do believe, uh, I do feel is probably the best word. I do feel that it is very, very likely we live in a simulation. And I, this is my first time finding your program. I appreciate the professionalism, uh, and the, the, the well makeup, the, the makeup of your program. It seems very nice. So I'm going to subscribe on YouTube and stay tuned. Thank you. I appreciate that. I was actually just about to ask you, first time caller. I appreciate uh, all the first time callers and all the callers, but uh, I do like to know where you found us. So, was it just a YouTube search, and you just found us by who was live or whatever? Yes, sir. I searched for the word transhumanism, and you, your show came up uh, as a live uh, as a live broadcast. And I was like, "Oh, that's really interesting." And then here we are <laughs> here we are right on i appreciate it brett thank you for finding us thanks for the amazing phone call you're welcome back anytime okay we go monday through thursday 7 p.m pacific and uh talk to you soon have a fantastic night man thank you sir bye thank you there you go good stuff i appreciate that thank you thanks uh thanks for finding us thanks for the phone call and thanks for uh for uh, all the all the amazing thoughts uh 702-957-1037 that's 702-957-1037 you can click the discord link uh we're still talking about quantum echoes and pixels in space do we live in a simulation and if so what are the larger implications love to hear your thoughts and uh let's go to jennifer in missouri thank you for being patient my friend welcome to troubled minds go right ahead hey yeah, we're in an ice storm up here, so or oh over here, I guess. Oh my goodness! But, you know the, <laughs> yeah. So, but with the idea of the simulated reality, it's it's turned into the simulated reality conversation. It's but and it's a great conversation, and it's really strange too because it reminds. I was doing some studying and I was reading about George Berkeley, and I don't know if I've heard about him, but he talks about something called immaterialism and idealism and it's just really it falls like right in line with this it's like they were talking about simulated reality like in the 1800s and what he talks about and i'm just going to share it a little bit and it's not my philosophy or anything but it it's really weird it's basically that everything is an accumulation of ideas and that no objects exist and what he says is that i guess only the mind's of perceptors like and spirits that perceive like people like a a perceiving spirit that that's the only reality that exists that there are no independent objects basically and so what he says is that um what people perceive every day like tables and chairs 
and things like that are basically just an accumulation of ideas. And, but the, the objects themselves are not being perceived. They're just ideas. So like sight and touch are just ideas and they're collections of ideas. And that there is no such thing as material substance. And this is really weird because when you talk about like, um, like empty mass or dark matter or things like that, you know, like, uh, or well, when you have these kinds of ideas, it's really strange. And he said that each spirit is a simple, undivided, active being whose sole purpose was just to think. And his master argument was that mind independent objects do not exist because it's impossible to conceive of them. Okay. And the world <laughs> is made up of the ideas of God and human beings. So his argument that's really hard to get around for this idea of a reality created by ideas is that an object can't exist if it's not been conceived of <laughs> by a mind. And so there are no independent objects existing. Does that make sense? Like, um, basically that mind independent objects, like say a box or a chair or something like that, that it could not exist of its own accord because it'd be impossible to conceive of it. Like you could only see and perceive what you can conceive of so nothing else can exist unless you can conceive of it, unless you can perceive it. It doesn't exist. So that does kind of give a basis for simulated reality being a reality in a way, but it's a simulated reality that you are creating or that is being created by another sensible spirit, like a like God or another human being or some other perceiving self-aware being. And otherwise, no objects can exist in the material. And the immaterialism idea is basically that there is no material, that it's all thought and accumulation of thoughts, and that every object is just a culmination of thoughts and ideas of us, basically, and that they don't exist on their own, and they don't exist anywhere except for in our thoughts. And so when you're reaching out and touching something, you're touching a thought, not an object, and that there's nothing there. That's pretty wild, and that uh, yeah. So so like uh, yeah. like like I've heard this before too, in a, in a sense of a um, holographic universe type of thing, where maybe it's being projected from somewhere else, from some entity elsewhere outside of our universe itself. Uh, kind of similar, kind of not, but it means that nothing's here anyway. Like all of this is just empty space, right? And we've ca- talked about that in the past, how most of the human body yeah. is empty space anyway. But what if the universe itself is all empty space as much as we uh, don't want it to be or do want it to be? It just depends, doesn't it? Possibly. <laughs> yeah. And there were huge arguments against it, you know. And there's all kinds of, this was one of the great conversations and we're still having it today by talking about simulated reality. But the hard, I think that that one part about that mind independent objects, like an object that doesn't require like something that can exist without you thinking of it can't exist because you can't, if you, you have to think of it and you have to perce- you have to perceive it or it doesn't exist and it doesn't exist if you don't perceive it or think of it and it will it can't be there if you don't it needs someone a perceiving spirit for it to exist and so nothing else can exist unless it's being perceived by a sensible being which seems pretty wild to me so it's and really I- strange it is. It is. It's yeah. bizarre in that. It's really uh, odd. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. So. 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 Like you said, it's not your theory. You don't necessarily say that that's the case. Uh, but what about the odds of us living in some sort of simulation? Maybe not that exact simulation that you just described. Uh, maybe something else. Do you think that's a, a possibility? Um, like they said, uh, like a, a Night Stalker said in the chat there, Elon Musk has said it's a, to the factor of billions uh, odds that we live in the actual base reality. Do you do you buy that at all? I'm, yeah, I'm not prepared to argue that 
Micah, the argument that this is not a simulated reality, that independent objects, objects existing free of the mind, free of perception do exist. I'm not prepared for that kind of, for the argument of that, to have the conversation that to speak against the simulated reality. So I, I don't know. I, I don't think, I'm not sure simulated is even the exact right word. Like, it's just ideas. Like, um, it, it seems like it's like that to me. But that, I mean, and that actually is my kind of thinking about it because the, ch- I mean, it's really strange, <laughs> but I mean, it just, I don't know as far as like what it would be made up of, because it's not made up of anything. And we know that, that it's all, it's mostly just dark matter or it's all dark matter. And so it's not like it's, it, it's the, like when you look at nature and each individual human being, those are the ideas of God, kind of, or something like that, something that would fall into that category. But the things around us, everything we see around us came from our thinking and from our ideas. You know, like, we took all of our ideas and we made, like, petroleum and plastics and glass and sand and things like that. Well, not sand, glass from sand and things like that. We took all the things that got, were the ideas of something that was like God And we made things like, you know, just everyday objects all around us, buildings, roads, houses, clothes, cooking, things like that. All of them are ideas and they weren't anything until we thought of it. And there was nothing there until we did. And then there was something else that thought of everything before us, which is something like God or something, which falls into that category of like, what, who? (laughs) <laughs> but it's really interesting because, you know, the, that each spirit though, like each one of us is like not divided from that thing. Cause we were made of its idea. Like this idea about God would be, or other perceiving spirits, whatever that, like us, other spirit beings, like we're basically that, like whatever is us that's thinking that's using our brain. Because that's weird, too. I mean, if you believe in the idea that the brain, never mind, but, (laughs) you know, your body itself is being, it's being animated by something, you know, if you believe in that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you you know me. I'm only laughing because I I understood exactly what happened right there. It happens to me all the time. You're like, go go down, like like your your thought process just goes down just too far and too far out. And you're like, no, I'm I'm just not going to bring that up. (laughs) 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 Yeah, absolutely. Great stuff as always. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it does. It does. Great show tonight. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate the phone call as well. Always a great call from you. Uh, the, the people in the chat saying Jennifer's back, blowing All up brains tonight. again. <laughs> uh, appreciate it very much. All so night tonight was good, uh, amazing stuff. Thank you, thank you. Well, have a good night. Thanks you too. Appreciate that very much. That's Jennifer in Missouri. Uh, she's got a YouTube channel. Give give her a follow. Uh, link is in the description down below. Uh, she talks about all kinds of amazing things, as you can tell. Uh, very, very, very smart young lady, and uh, blowing up brains on a nightly basis here on Troubled Minds. Appreciate the the phone calls from her and everybody else. That's uh, again. That, that's the whole point of this. Is uh, it's it's you know get get together, have a conversation with our friends, and uh, consider well the things maybe we hadn't considered before. And uh, uh, as always, you guys, you know, you're welcome on the show. If, uh, we got a few minutes left if you want to squeak a call in 702-957-1037 that's 702-957-1037 we'll put you on the show it's as easy as that and uh let's see trying to fix this uh this damn camera keeps breaking itself it's driving me nuts all right anyway so uh that's what's going on uh, good stuff for that from jen as always i uh, i don't know like uh like do you think that it is possible that things only exist because they will th- we will them into existence if we don't think of them then they don't exist and uh, well and then who's giving us that uh, that leeway to do those things is, is it from a greater power that that omnipotent presence or um, omniscient presence or both um, uh, it's it's hard to say it's hard to say and I think I think the more you consider uh, the, the nature of reality and uh, how well where we fit into it I think the the, the wilder and crazier these uh, these ideas get and uh, I think that's a uh, fantastic stuff as always like uh, like uh, like Brett was saying as well um, I think that we're we're in a situation where you you can't easily just uh right just just kind of uh, it is what it is right like i mean we we live in these in these situations but 
is the nature of reality like we expect it to be? Is it is it like uh, like it's been described to us? I think that's the that's the thing. If we will it, if we understand it, if we think of it, then maybe these things do happen. Maybe these things do come to pass with not just cheat codes and other things, but uh, well, like Jennifer was describing, that uh, maybe that is the cheat code. The cheat code is that uh, we are actually uh, sort of um, uh, maybe uh, maybe we are maybe maybe we are the cheat code in and of itself. We just need to believe it to make it happen and that's pretty wild to think about that uh, pretty good stuff uh shout out over there on uh rockfin thank you to barb for the tip i appreciate that very much uh thank you for uh, as, again spending your time with us and uh, enjoying the conversations very very good stuff uh and like i always say uh and you know if you're new to the show you you're starting to realize that uh it's true that uh, I, I have no inside sources but uh, the secret weapon of troubled minds is you and you see uh from the just from the, the breadth of uh, amazing phone calls that we get so pretty pretty good stuff I appreciate uh, all the uh, amazing takes tonight. Uh, like I said, got a few minutes. If you want to squeak in a call, 702-957-1037. We'll put you on the show. Let's go to Eric in California. Welcome to the show, my friend. Go right ahead. Hey, this is Eric. I talked to you a couple of weeks ago. Right on. I recall. Uh, how much t- How much time do you got, buddy? Do uh, you have less than five minutes right now? Or yeah, less than, five, less than five minutes. But uh, it, when this happens, uh, you always have the option to hang over to after a break. So at the top of the hour, we'll get off the radio, take like a quick two-minute break, and then get back to you. So if you want to do that, you definitely okay, have time. Okay, cool. Okay, so you just let me know, and we'll do that. All right, thing. well, uh, I've been listening to you whenever I can. Uh, I do my own research also, so sometimes it's hard to listen to everybody on the radio. But uh I like, I like, uh, well, I, I want to compliment you because I, I, I'm a researcher, but I also research the researchers. I research the podcasters. I try to get a, I, you know, cause we only have so much time to listen to everybody. So you, I just think that you're, you seem to be on point. You're obviously very intelligent and you speak very well. So I, I'm going to hope that your intuition is good as well. So I'm going to test it right now. Okay. Sure. Fire away. <laughs> I want to know, I want to know, uh, cause I, I'm going to be honest, uh, First of all, as far as Lou Elizondo, the person, the personality, um, I like the guy. I have no problems with the guy. I, I don't uh, get any negative vibes from the guy. But there's there's obviously two sides to the fence on opinions about what their objective is with uh, increasing the conversation about UFOs and having people in Congress and the Senate and so on and so forth and raising more money to study. And so the, some on one side they're thinking that there, there's a, it's just a money grab that really there's never going to be disclosure. They're just going to talk about disclosure like they have for 70 years. And then on the other side, there's another group of people that are behind him 100%, believe 100% that he's going to reach his goals and his objectives to get, to get the disclosure out there on a level much higher than it's ever been before. And I'm wondering, where do you see this going? Um, I, so I see it as that uh, my opinion of Congress is very low. And uh, even though some are celebrating congressional hearings regarding UFOs, I think it's probably a fool's errand because we're talking about national security. And so, as always, right, they hide behind that umbrella of national security, whether it is or not. We've seen some of that stuff with uh, some FOIA shenanigans with uh, John Greenwald Jr., stuff like that. They're always trying to play games with him and, you know, withhold information and not even for good reasons sometimes. So so I think that uh, maybe Lou Elizondo, in my opinion, is probably trying to do the right thing i how far it'll get us i i i have my doubts let's let's leave it there but uh, we are out of time so so you want to hang on uh till after the break we'll get one more comment from you and then we got to get off the radio here okay buddy okay you, you gonna hang on Sure. Okay. Sure. All right. All right. So I'm going to put you on mute and I'll come back and get you in just a moment. Thanks for uh, thanks for the question. Thanks for calling. Be right back with Eric in just one moment. And all right. So as we finish this, you guys know how these conversations go, right? We get together. We're trying to talk about all kinds of ideas. And uh, we got a third hour of Trouble Minds coming up, as you know, which means that uh, if you're listening to us on the Fringe FM, stay tuned for Joe Roop lighting the void. If you're listening to us on any other platform, including the podcast feed, stay tuned for a third hour of Trouble Minds. 
line. Still taking your phone calls. We're still on the line here with Eric. We're going to go right back to him. And th- the questions are, again, like I said, I do not have answers for these things. I can tell you my opinion, but don't ever trust anything I say. Go go verify. Go check. Go make sure. Uh, again, in, in this post-truth world, uh, you can't, just because you got an internet, you got a microphone on the internet, doesn't mean anything, all right? It doesn't mean anything. Don't trust a word I say. Go verify. That's why I always link my sources and why we do this sort of in an open format so that we can all talk about amazing things. So as we finish, uh, again, if you're listening to us on the Fringe FM, stay tuned for Joe Roop Lighting the Void. And Third Hour of Trouble Minds coming up on every other platform. It ends like this. Be sure, be strong, be true. Thank you for listening. From our troubled minds to yours, have a great night. Okay, uh, what we're going to do is we got Eric on the phone, so I'm not going to make him wait. We're going to just, uh, we'll cut the break, and then we'll go to break after we get back to Eric here on the phone. We're still taking your phone calls, guys. We're talking about this idea of quantum echoes, pixels in space, and of course, well, uh, base reality. What do you think? Do we live in a matrix situation, or do you think there's something else going on? Uh, still working on the webcam here. If you guys are <laughs> like to see me make stupid faces, well, I will uh, get stupid faces back up as early as I can. I don't know if it's going to work, but that's what we're doing. Take it, still taking your phone calls, still talking about this. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Let's go right back to Eric. Thanks for waiting, my friend. Let's we'll see. Let's kill this music. And uh, there we go. Welcome back, sir. You were talking about Lou Elizondo. And uh, what's a, uh, well, I don't know. What do you think? What's your, what's your take there? Or what, what do you think about my take? Well, yeah. I like your take because you're smart. You, you, you kind of stay in the middle of the road, which is what you should do as a host probably. Um, but I, being the caller, I could probably be a little more uh, speculative. But, well, you know, it's interesting when the whole TTSA thing started, uh, it was like COVID for me. I just wanted to just just watch and see what happened. You know, people was telling me to go get the shot. I said, I'm not going to get a shot till I just kind of observe what happens for all. Same thing with Lou Elizondo, TTSA, and those guys. I just wanted to watch and see what happened. And then when they kind of disbanded and there was no real accounting for where all that money went and several, there seems like a lot of loose ends. Um, I became a little skeptical as to what their agenda really was. And then of course, as you know, Lou left and then TTSA, it, maybe it still exists, but it's not the same TTSA it was before. And so now you've got Lou and Mellon. Now that you've heard of this guy, maybe John Warner, who's related to Mellon, who thinks that, that his brother, his uncle, his cousin, uh, Christopher Mellon and Lou Elizondo are pulling a fast one over on us. That's what he thinks. And then there's a few other guys you may have heard of that have a couple of radio shows. One guy just did a documentary that was, uh, that's kind of getting smashed up today because he stole some content from other podcasters. I won't use his name on your show, but anyway, but you've got this side over here. That's really aggressively just trying to, uh, to put Lou down, okay, and they, but they're not really providing any evidence either as to what, in other words, they've got a theory, they've got a belief, they think this is what's happening, but they can't prove it, but they sell it really well, or at least in their minds are selling it well. And then you got the other guys on the other side who, who support the whole process of what apparently Lou is saying he's trying to do, which is to get the people talking about it. And uh, anyway, but, but ultimately, uh, I don't, I, I go with what, Richard Doty told me, which is that we're never going to get disclosure from the government. So, yeah, I, I don't. And then you've got the Galileo Project. I don't know if you're familiar with that. That's another thing if you wanted to talk about the Galileo Project. Yeah, I talked about it a little bit last night. Uh, we started with an Avi Loeb article. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I agree with the Doty take there. Um, not sure I trust Richard Doty, by the way, just to, just throwing that out there, uh, because he's got kind of that uh, checkered past, let's say. And I do know, I, I say that because I, I do remember last time you said you're, you're working with him and the rest of that. So just just to give you my, my initial thought on Doty, that's, it's a complicated thing but um yeah i don't know i mean regarding all the rest of that uh there's always going to be a lot of drama between the ufo stuff and i I find it funny that i'm on the periphery of that i pay attention to it like i know exactly what you're talking about the documentary and the uh you know that they they 
took some uh, footage from um, the unidentified celebrity review and you know and there's there's a to do about it and it's kind of a hit piece on Lou Elizondo and uh, and if you guys don't know so we're talking about Lou Elizondo is the guy again TTSA um, c- trying to bring out UFO transparency so it's a little bit off topic for tonight but I think it's always relevant a discussion to have uh, m- let me ask you my friend uh, while we got you on here is uh, what do you think about this idea of living in the matrix that's the topic tonight do you think that uh, we actually live in some sort of simulation or do you think that's a uh, poppycock as they say um you know let me say this first uh first of all i don't believe in the flat earth however if you've ever listened to somebody who thinks that they're convinced 100 percent the flat earth is real they will do a hell of a job selling you on the idea of it and so and it could cause a person to stop and think maybe for a minute same thing with uh we i had a show once uh several years ago called the quantum hologram matrix and and that's that was the whole basis of the, of the show, we, you know, quantum hologram matrix. I mean, I guess I can imagine it to be true. If I had to bet money on it, I would say, no, I don't think that's the reality we live in, but, but I don't know, just like you, just like you say, I don't know, but it doesn't resonate with me. The idea of living in a quantum hologram matrix. Um, it's just a little too fantastical for me. I don't know. I can't feel that one. <laughs> too much maybe juice. <laughs> that's fine. That's totally cool. Yeah. Uh, that's why we do it in this format, just to get all the ideas. And uh, I'm with you in the sense that I don't like the idea, but I do consider it possible, very possible. Uh, I'm kind of coin flippy on the situation there, only because of uh, you know the, the, the metaverse. I mean, we're trying to build basically that in our own sort of a framework right now. So uh, imagine like a, a super advanced civilization, you know, let's say a thousand generations ahead, they could easily create what we're experiencing. So uh, I'm, I'm going to call it possible. I appreciate the call, my friend. What else you got for us while we got you on the phone? Uh, so what about the moon? Uh, I watched this documentary done by some guy in the UK years ago. Uh, totally debunking the, the the whole moon uh, landing and also the Russian moon landing. So I don't know. Do you do you got a vibe on? Do you think we've been to the moon or do you think uh, we have bases on the moon? Do you think there's a secret space program that NASA's kind of covering up or do you have a, do you have a thought on that? Yeah, of course. Uh, NASA to me is a PR front for a secret space program. Uh, how how deep that rabbit hole goes, I don't know. Um, regarding the moon landing, I would say. I think we've been there. I think space, you know, there's a lot of people that think space is not real and the flat earth and all the rest of that stuff that, you know, the, the firmament and all these things. But I I don't buy that at all. I I do. I do believe space is real. I do believe we've been to the moon. What I don't believe is that uh, all of the details they've given us regarding those things are, uh, are not, they're not a hundred percent accurate. I think, I think they've fibbed. I think maybe we did go to the moon at some point, but maybe it wasn't the first try. Maybe they did fake that first try for television. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, again, I don't have the answers. I wish I did, but it, uh, definitely secret space program bases on the moon. Not sure I'm sold on that, but uh, again, uh, I'm open to seeing some evidence for it. So yeah, for sure. For sure. Right on. Okay. Good talking to you, bro. I'll, I'll hang and let you go with get somebody else on here. Good talking to you. Appreciate it. You too. Uh, Eric, uh, thanks for the phone call. Good stuff. Still talking to you guys. What do you think? 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. We'll put you on the show. Talking about quantum echoes and pixels in space. We'll get to this in just a sec. I'm just fiddling with this damn webcam all damn night now, and it is driving me insane. Uh, Thank you for all the amazing phone calls tonight, as always. And uh, like I said, the secret weapon of troubled minds is, of course, you. And if you want to be part of the discussion, 702-957-1037. Trying to fix this damn camera again. Again, come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. All right. Let's see. Uh, there we go. There we go. What's up? Uh, okay. Okay. Let's do it. Let's go to, uh, let's see. What do we got? Phone calls? No. All right. So 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. We'll put you on the show with Mike and uh, the the web, the broken webcam. <laughs> I'm still working on this. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. What's up, Indigo Kid? I, I just love the Maybe Juice Dose. Uh, Mike, you rock my world. Thank you. That's very nice. That is very nice of you to say. I appreciate 
appreciate that. All right. So uh, we're just, we're hanging out. We're talking about this idea that we live in as some sort of a construct, a matrix or some digital something, right? Is this, uh, is this where we're at? Do you think this is possible? And uh, what do you think uh, is, this is in regard to, well, uh, your reality? Do you think that, uh, had, had some pretty amazing thoughts tonight regarding all this, but uh, as always, right, it's not what I think, it's about what you think. So, so you tell me, and we'll, uh, one, one more time, 702-957-1037, and we'll put you on the show. Also, join the Discord, troubledminds.org, and we'll put you there. And let's see, what do we got? What do we got? Uh, yep, let's see. All right. Let's go to, uh, let's see, do we have Daryl here? No. Okay. Anyway, so we all take, take in your phone calls. Let's play a little bit more of that uh, that conversation from from uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson and the individual that goes by the name, I uh, can't remember his name. Come on, Mike. Come on, Mike. You're better than that. Uh, anyway, all right. Let's play this, and then I'll get you his name in just a sec. This is from uh, Neil deGrasse, and uh, his name is G- – I, I can't remember. Uh, I'm going to pull it up in just a sec. I see you over there on Rockfin. Thank you for the tip. I'll read your comment in just one moment. Let's do this. Let's uh, play this uh, clip. Uh, this is part three of that conversation regarding uh, pixels in uh, space and equations. So listen to this. Towards Dr. Gates, i um, curious about your theory. You say uh, there's computer code in these equations. Now, computer code is generally just instructions for a processor, and I'm curious as to what the instructions you're finding are, and if you're not sure what's to say that it's actually computer code, I mean, theoretically, the number pi has all the data that's ever existed. Well, we say that they're computer codes... I mean, the digits in pi. Yes. Yes. Okay. We say they're computer codes, first of all, because the structure of the equation is such that they dictate that there are certain things that are actually strings of ones and zeros. That's, now, that's just digital data. But it's not just random ones and zeros. As I mentioned earlier, let me talk about something that you probably do every day, but I don't know if you're a computer scientist or not. Most of us sit at our... Sounds that kind of fluency, I suppose. Okay, well, (laughs) most of us sit at our computer screens and we type on the keyboards, and we then send these, if we're using a browser, we're sending strings of ones and zeros elsewhere. But on the other hand, in the transmission process, there's always some fluctuations. So zero that you type here because of static in line, might be read as a one at the other end and vice versa. And so in fact, when you sit and type on the keyboard, your computer's doing something behind your back. Namely, it throws in a bunch of extra ones and zeros, which in these things are called error correcting codes, so that the computer at the other end can look at the whole collection of what you type plus what was sent and figure out if there were bits that were being flipped back and forth. Okay, right. And so he's talking about this computer code as a basis of the universe itself. And he's using the analogy of the computer uh, sending extra characters, extra ones and zeros that you're not actually seeing. You're typing on the keyboard, you know, M-I-K-E, uh, or uh, Troubled Minds, right, in, in the keyboard. But uh, there's more things going on than what you perceive. And so that's his idea here. Uh, we got one more clip from that, which we'll go to. Looking to hear your thoughts on this again, 702-957-1037. Uh, shout out to uh, Tysa over on Rockfin. Appreciate that. Uh, sent a, a nice tip my way. And um, here's, here's the, uh, the comment. It was a bad day in every way. I am grateful to know this show as hard sleet turns to snow. Uh, beautifully written. Uh, I love this conversation and the beautiful ideas that has replaced reliving this day's waste with a, with a smile and a hopeful thought for tomorrow. That dude who dumped me so roughly lacks the troubled mind that ignites me. Every caller rocks completely shifted my soured perspective in time to sleep in peace. Thank you for sharing, Tysa. Thank you for the tip. Thank you uh, for for spending even a bad day with us uh, and glad we could make you smile. Um, and don't worry, tomorrow gets better uh, because that's just the way it goes. Time time heals all. Uh, sorry to hear about your bad day, but uh, uh, remember, God willing, we have tomorrow. Uh, thank you so much for uh, spending your time with us. I appreciate that. Sleep well tonight. Um, there we go. <laughs> What's up, Kelly? Time for some maybe smoke. <laughs> there it is. What's going on, guys? Uh, I see you there. Uh, I see the chat. I appreciate you guys very much. And um, uh, let's go. Uh, we got uh, also Shadows of the Moon. Shout out to her in the in the, uh, the chat there. Uh, give her a follow. And uh, and uh, she she has a, a YouTube channel. Been a friend of the show for a very long time. And uh, uh, does good work over there on her channel as well. Uh, all right. So uh, maybe smoke. Maybe smoke time. Uh, so looking to hear from you guys. What do you think regarding this idea that there's a computer code sort of embedded in the universe itself? Um, pretty wild stuff, right? It's, um, it's, it's, um, I don't know. I, I don't know exactly uh, how to frame it in the sense of, is it real or is it not? But, uh, that's what we're trying to do. Like I said, I, I wish I could be more concise sometimes, but 
eh, you know, I am what I am. <laughs> and uh, what's that? Was that uh, Popeye? I am, I am what I am. Uh, anyway, so uh, one more time, 702-957-1037. Click the Discord link. We'll put you on the show. It's as simple as that. Uh, we'll go. To, let's go to our good friend, Kelly in Colorado. Time for some maybe smoke. Welcome to Troubled Minds, my friend. How are you doing tonight? Wow, that was fast. Bam. Sometimes, hey, sometimes, man, sometimes you got to wait. Sometimes, boom, you're right in. No, I was just saying because uh, that was that was pretty quick because I just like actually just hit the buttons, come on, and boom. Okay, all right. I, I checked, and for all I knew, you were there for ten minutes. <laughs> Good timing. We'll just uh, uh, we'll just call it uh, synchronicity tonight. Uh, welcome, my friend. What's uh, so? What do you think about this stuff? I, this this conversation I'm playing with. Um, uh, it's James. It's his name is Gate, uh, Professor Gates, uh, and he he uh, you you were actually the one who sent me this video a long time ago, and I'm playing that discussion that the relevant parts to the the computer code sort of embedded in the universe itself. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, um, that's when, when I seen that one was actually it, it blew my mind too because the way he's talking, and that's where he was talking, and he'll get further into it. And he talks about what he calls a dinkers, and um, it's just how he puts it in. Like, it, what's interesting what he is explaining to, yeah, it's like when you're typing, right, and then you stop typing, and you'll know like it just adds ones and zeros because. You know, it needs to fill up, like, the page or whatever before it sends it all out. And so that's how they can tell if it's, you know, being, you know, well, it, it was either typed in or it was just filled in. And that's what he's going to talk about, is how he's seeing that in the fabric of time. and Or, you know, I think the string theory is what he's talking about. But, yeah, that one's pretty crazy, man. Because, But I also, when I start thinking about that, I, I kind of think that maybe that's, what we see as perceive as humans, you know, maybe the energy, cause we are like, I, I believe that we are like energy beings, right? So, and there's a source from, from which, you know, something that all of the all one or whatever they, someone wants to call it, but let's say it, let's say it's all one energy source, right? So maybe it's so complex of life that it looks to us, as a computer code, right? Okay, I'm so, with you. Yeah, so, and, and you know, being here, like, uh, some, I was going to get into the conversation of, like, how um, someone was talking about earlier, which was actually great, some of those new callers haven't heard them, and, uh, but how they're saying, um, it was kind of a talking about, what were you guys talking about? Let's see, about uh, how, oh, the digital sky, right? Well, what's interesting to me is where you get some people that, you know, they record the moon and stuff. And if you've ever seen it, it's called a uh, lunar wave, right? But there's a sky who's, you know, like, it was a certain time of month or something. But the one that was pretty incredible, I was trying to find it and, you know, try to post it, but. I, I couldn't find it on YouTube uh, fast enough, but hey, he's uh, he he does some incredible work too. I can't remember his name. If you if I remember if I heard his name, he, it, it you know he, it's uh, it's known around like the UFOlogy, um, you know all his his work anyway. Is that Crow Seven Seven Seven? It might be uh, Dabu Seven. Yeah, Dabu Seven might be him, but. Uh, he was talking where he 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 records the moon right, but he has a double wave, a double uh, lunar wave where it looks like a. It's either the moon is a you know it's a it's fake you know like a pair you know just like a like a screenshot or the sky is you know what I mean this whole thing that it was interesting when I looked at your show tonight was the digital sky right when they talk about that but yeah you look at some of the stuff sometimes you know or like. I don't know. Sometimes I get the peripheral vision where sometimes it, it looks like, I don't know, man, it's, it's either, uh, my, like my eyes going bad or I'm seeing some shit, man. But sometimes it, it does look pixelated, you know, a reality itself in a distance, you know, it, it, it kind of pixelated itself. And then it kind of comes to, or you hear people where they say that, you know, there's a glitch in the mate, you know, and some stuff like that. <clears throat> But what's interesting is see if we can 
you know, go beyond that. And uh, I want people to go ahead and uh, check this out. There's a, a patent that I ran across a few years ago, but it it starts with uh, it's two zero zero six zero zero one four one two five, and what it is, it's a training from the United States government, and it's uh, walking walking through walls training is what it is. So the invention is a training system which enables the human body to acquire significant hyperspace energy in order to pull the body out of dimension so that the person can walk through solid objects such as wooden doors. That's where it will come up when you look at it. And it was, uh, it was, um, and it, it was, uh, you know, it granted when it first initiated in July 14 in 2014. But you find some stuff like that, you know, so I don't know, is it, is it a reality or is it like, I mean, or is it, a, are we just a simulation? It's, it's, it's a trip because that's why I say if, is it, if we go to, you know, we're all energy, maybe that, you know, I'm saying if we're reading into like that thing theory with ones and zeros, right, you break it all down. Maybe it just looks like to us as a computer system. I don't know. Yeah, it could be. And I think that's that's the weirdness of all this is uh, we don't really know, do we? But 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 I think the we- uh, even more weird to all that is there, you know, like again we have this uh, sort of this, uh, well, what would you call it? Like uh, science and religion, they say they can't be compatible, right? They, there's the whole this idea that you know one or the other, you can't have both. Uh, I disagree with that entirely. I think that uh, a lot of the things that we do scientifically, uh, s- sort of, you need n- some some maybe juice, man, uh, because because I, I know you're in the same boat with me, at least in that regard. But but what about this idea that uh, even if we do live in a simulation, does that mean there's a god, or does it make God? Uh, do you think it, you think it sort of defines a creator in a different way? It sort of undermines a religious thought. Uh, what do you think about that in particular? When I look at stuff like that, you know, you know me, because I'm not really into a religious aspect, but I can understand and see why we're, you know, people at that time would call something, you know, maybe something that's out of this world, you know, a god, or, you know, uh, looking at misused technology that, you know, something that's back then, you know, we're talking, you know, millennia ago, and then, you know, that like a, I don't know, let's say a flying saucer come in, you know that type of stuff like that is it's it, you know for them it'd be confusing you know it, to kind of wrap their mind around something like that you know so if you br- bring that into our perspective now it i don't know man it see i don't know man for for me it, i have to really it's it's something that we if if we're if we're looking at the whole big picture, right? We're our physics, you know, like you know, theology, it's, you know, theory and shit like that. We have no, we're just scratching the surface, and we think that we already know a lot about the universe, in which we don't. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's that's really one of the main premises of this show is that uh, you know there's a there's a whole shit ton of stuff we just don't know anything about. And uh, it's that's why that's why we drink the maybe juice and talk about it because somebody needs to and I and I think it's valuable too you know this that uh, you know this that these these discussions kind of happen outside the circles of academia because that they have this weird way of um, uh, you, you know sort of uh, massaging each other's egos and things like this and you know uh, not a, uh, gatekeeping conversations and things like that you know like hey you know th- these ideas are ours too and we should be able to talk about them as well so hell yeah brother hell yeah but I, I don't know like given the answers I don't know bro <laughs> I'm with you I'm with you with re- I'm not particularly religious myself but I do think that there's something out there that we don't understand wh- whether you want to call it a creator or who knows what but uh, yeah yeah Definitely good stuff. Um, what about uh, what else you got? What else you got for us, Kelly? <clears throat> I don't know, man. Um, let's see. So, with that uh, that that theorist, you know, the physicist, where he's talking about all these numbers and stuff. That you know, for me, that's just like you know, you were talking like you know, we all drink the maybe juice. They're drinking the same shit too, because if they're just theorizing this stuff, they can't really prove it. It's just in theory, right? And ones and zeros and numbers and all that, you know, that 
that's the whole thing where it's kind of hard. I mean, we all can do that. You know, it's just like an imagination, you know, but to say they're trying to put it all with mathematics, which is great and all right. But is it really the, the, the true bottom theory or the fact, right. Of what we conceive as, you know, reality or whatnot. That's what I'm trying to get at where we don't even have a, you know, it, it's, we can all theorize of what, you know, what could be, you know, and, and uh, and the nice talker, he, he's got some, he, he's got some good ones too. You know what I'm saying? It's, you know, with his theorizing, you know, a lot of that stuff that we talk about, you know what I mean? And, and those, and those deep conversations like that, it, yeah, you know, we, we all can do it, but and that's why I like with Tesla, you know, if we going into the physical world, right? He's, he was a, uh, he, he he was the other. That's why he kind of bumped heads with you know the people with that would just you know have theories you know because he would he was an inventor. This man had thousands of patents, but you know he had inventions that I mean they were mind blowing stuff too. So I don't know, man. It's we're all we just need to I, I would say get in touch with that whole. I don't know the energy that, or whatever you want to call it, that the life spark, I guess. But man, I don't know. For me to call it a, just a one single being that's an all creator, we're the creators. We're the ones that do that. You know, it's just kind of maybe like everything is we were talking about. Is everything's right in that uh, galactic way, right of knowledge. You know that we would call the uh, Akashic records. You know, we're just in something that needs to tap in. We have got the potential, but we'll just, we'll have to just keep practicing, I guess. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. A, a, a nice way to say, hell if I know. <laughs> but, but we're going to keep punching, aren't we? We're going to keep punching at the universe trying to get answers. <laughs> yeah, yeah good, good stuff as always, Kelly. You're the best, my friend. It, it's it's a wild thing, this idea. But uh, I don't know. I'm going to give it coin flip status in my head, and uh, hopefully uh, we're not a program. But uh, you got to admit, though, Kelly, if if we're a program, it's a hell of a program, isn't it? Yeah, I mean... See, and that's so hard for me to under, try to, like, to agree with. But, <clears throat> you know, you bring, a lot of people can bring forth different type of information, right, or, or what we call evidence. But I don't know, man. We Do we really know? I, I, I just, for me, I just couldn't believe myself as a, that, what is that old video game where they had, like, a diamond over their heads and shit, and they walk around and, like, you like know, Sims, right? Like Sim City yeah. or whatever. Be like the Sims, but or like these new programs where you're, you know, you're building armies, you know, and then you got you're trying to, you know, take land and whatnot. It's just that whole conquer type shit, and just that, you know, it's that, you know, that if that if we are a program, that part of the program is a virus, and that needs to be eradicated because we're not going to pro- progress in a in a in the right direction by you know, constantly destroying something, you know, even though they say chaos builds, uh, what's the word I was looking for? Like chaos builds, you know, beauty, you have beauty after chaos or, you know, chaos creates a different form of energy, but now we gotta, we gotta step beyond that. It's because love is greater than all that shit, man. Amen. Amen to that brother. 100%. 100%. And if it is a if it is a if it is a simulation, at least they programmed hope and love and all the good things and uh, all the good things for humanity as well. So uh, at least at least they gave us some, right? Uh, it's an old Grant Lee Buffalo song that says uh, the gods make sure we all get a taste. And uh, I like the idea. I like the idea. Good shit, my brother. Um, you're the best. Uh, you're welcome to stay. You uh, what, what else you got for us? Uh, you know the drill. You you're a, you're a friend of the show, unofficial co-host and uh yeah, what's up? What's up? What's up? Just real quick, man. I just wanted to say too why why I don't believe in it too because that's where you know the whole saying of uh, we have our own individual thoughts and uh, you know our own uh, decisions to make. You know, so if that's the case, you know, there's times where you could sit there and think, what do I, you know, if I'm going to make 
uh, I've had those conversations. Though. If I make this, this, this if I make this this, this decision, what ha- what's going to happen? You know what I mean? Uh, you know the pros and cons. It's not like so if we're if it's a program and you know all things are you know maybe into that program, we're all thoughts and you know different reactions and everything can be played out. I don't, man, I don't, then if that's the case, then it is a game. And the game is to figure this all out or actually just defeat it because, and I believe that's what the monks do, you know, like the monks that, you know, they talked about when they hit the rainbow body. I believe, you know, something like that, that they just stepped out of that, you know, they're no longer in the, the matrix anymore. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I mean, all, all this is still, uh, it, it, it boggles my mind just to consider all this possibility. But uh, I'm with you in that, uh, like I said, it feels real. Like it feels real, but that, that doesn't mean it's real, but it feels real, right? And there's, I got a whole bunch of links to, uh, if you guys are, again, uh, looking at some of the stuff I was reading to, before we started tonight. There's, there's a whole lot of um, people that are uh, basically describing what you're saying, Kelly, is that n- I don't buy it. I'm not, I don't believe it. Like this, this, uh, this idea that we live in some sort of simulation is crap. And I, I'm not, I'm, no, like I'm not, I'm not going to do that. And it's because they kind of don't want to break down reality in that particular way. And I get it. I understand. Like I said, number one, my ego hates it, but I think it's uh, got a bunch more sticky implications if it is true. So I think, I think, you know, there's compelling evidence to say also it's not. So I don't know. Like I said, I wish I had the answers, but I do not. But yeah, there's a, you're not the only one, my friend. There's a whole lot of people here that, uh, uh, not just here, but also in, in the, the communities at large, you know, the scientific communities that discuss this stuff that they're like, no, hell no, we do not live in a, in a matrix. And that's just the way it is. Right. And that's fine. There's a, uh, I'll pull up some, uh, some ideas here. There's some lists of why we are, why we, why we're not that type of thing. But yeah. So, so you're saying no, like the idea is fun to think about, but you don't think we, we actually do live in a simulation. Well, if we are, then we are probably one of the uh, the top AI. We're an AI then. Everybody is an AI. And all we're doing is replicating each other, you know, by, you know, having kids and stuff. That's all it is. If, the, if that's the case, if you want to look at it as that, that's what's interesting. You know, that we're a bunch of AIs running around. If everything, if, the, if that's the case, you know, for me, that's, that's a, that's a crazy program, man. That's, <laughs> that's a crazy program hell yes it is uh, like i said hey that that program is so special it created me damn what a program that is <laughs> see what i did there see what i did there <laughs> that's all i tell you man you got to be always positive yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. Just uh, just just making jokes, but uh, yeah, yeah, a hundred percent, hundred percent. A glass half full is troubled minds. Again, uh, you you know the deal. We're not here to to gloom and doom or any of the rest of that. Uh, Night Stalker says a bunch of NPCs running around, and uh, yeah, another thought too. Uh, actually, I don't want to take your time. Go, go go right ahead. What else you got, my friend? No, man, that was it. I just kind of wanted to see what else is. Go ahead and let's hear what other people's thoughts. Okay. All right. Uh, just real quick over on Rockfin. Uh, Tysa, uh, again, thank you for the tip there, and uh, sorry for your bad day. Uh, Tysa says, thanks, y'all. Listen to enough shows now and needed uh, y'all to know that Troubled Minds is exceptional, and I'd rather do this for sure. Express it all poetic-like, and so you know I am sincerely touched and sincerely s- silly as well. Uh, Robert said that uh, truth is the guy that dumped you was sent by the universe to prepare you for the guy who won't. Uh, well said. Well said, everybody involved. Uh, appreciate that. Thanks for, th- again, you know, thanks for sp- spending your bad day with us. And uh, like I said, uh, God willing, we got tomorrow and uh, tomorrow will be better. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for the kind words. And thank you again for the tip. Appreciate that a lot. Um, let's, uh, yeah, what's going on? Uh, look, looking to hear from you guys. We're still taking phone calls. If you want to be part of the show, we're talking about this idea that the universe may be pixelated. And of course, simulation theory, we talk about it often on this show. We've talked about the Philip K. Dick idea of the divine programmer and the, the dark counter player, the duality of creation, things like this. But in those terms, well, uh, what if none of that applies at all? And we're we're just part of this bizarre situation that is actually pixels. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. You still with us, Kelly? Oh yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. We got a phone call. We'll go to that. So, any thoughts on any of this before we do? No, man. Go ahead. Let me. I'll uh, go ahead and mute. Um, 
Okay. Uh, you're welcome to pop back in at any time. Uh, so uh, 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Uh, that great call we just had, that's Kelly, old friend of the show, the very first caller I can remember on Troubled Minds. Years ago, years ago, guys. <laughs> it's been years now. Uh, April will be four years for Troubled Minds. I'm very proud of that. Uh, let's go. Let's go to uh, MJ in Virginia. What's going on, MJ? Welcome to the show. How are you, my friend? I'm doing great. How are you, Michael? Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, I'm eager to hear your take on simulation theory. <laughs> do, do you think Do you think this is real, or do you think it's a bunch of bullshit? Um. All right. I want to explain how I my experiences, and then because I I'm I'm a, a experiencer, feeler, you know, amateur researcher. Okay. Um, we'll do it that way. Okay. Um, I've had experiences where I can, I've gone through meditation, but I keep my eyes open to meditation, okay? And uh, on my back porch, you have lots of trees, different depths, okay? And you know how you look through binoculars and you can adjust the, the magnification up close, but everything behind it goes blurry? Yes. And then you, you adjust it and everything in back is sharp, but what's up front is blurry, but it tends to get so close together that it almost looks flat. Okay. Oh, do you do you have you experienced that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know it's it's, it's sort of a, um, a, a, a yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the term is, but yes, I've experienced that one hundred percent. Okay, great. Now you understand what I'm talking about, and everybody else will too. Okay, and I went into a meditation. I'm keeping my eyes open, and of course, you said it's like you know maple trees and cedar trees, different shades of green. So I'm sitting there watching that, and my eyes started doing that where I could look up close, but everything black was blurry. And I'd look away, you know, for, uh, further away, and I got, you know, up close as boring, but further away was focused. And usually you can see all the way through. Then what happened after that was it started just becoming meshing together, and there was no depth. It was just one wall of green, and then it was just textures. Is this somebody took some paint and just sort of splattered it up there in different shades of green? Okay, and I kept going, and all of a sudden it, just, it was just flat. And then, of course, you know, I came out of the meditation. I was just shaking my head and kind of get back out. Then it comes back to that. Um, so, you know, I don't know that we're so much in a simulation as our bodies and our consciousness and our perception is extremely powerful, that we can change what we see in front of us if we choose to, um, you know, into not something different, but you tend to look through it. I've had experiences where I've looked, and I've talked about this on your show before, where I've looked out across my front yard and it just, everything disappeared and there was just like this dark map webbing and it was just moving very slowly from left to right, very slowly. And I saw it and then I looked down and, you know, shake my head and kind of come out of it and it's all gone. The trees are back and everything. So I don't know if it's a, a simulation so much if we're extremely powerful and we can see into the matter that it takes to make a tree or to, to make a bird or to make things, we can see further into it, um, if you want to put it that way. My, my personal belief in some of this is our, our life force energy, like I'm talking here, my voice, uh, when this body goes or I leave it, that all stops. Um, and I believe without that, this body and the memory of the body and the brains is a computer. It's a, it's a, we're in a conscious, organic computer, yet we're human, uh, and we do exist, and this is a reality, and there are lots of things in front of us that we don't create with our minds, but we can see further past what it is. So I don't, I don't know if it's so much of a simulation like we're computerized. Uh, we have too much free will, and there's too much, you know, if it is, then all the programs are running amok. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah, it's going nuts. <laughs> I, I, I think you know. in, in those terms, I think you're spot on. It's uh, things seems to be off the rails more and more. They say, uh, you know, may you live in interesting times, and it, this is off the rail times. So, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but it does seem like, uh, like maybe Robert suggested when he called in earlier that 
if it is some sort of simulation that maybe uh, they've uh, somebody's fell, fallen asleep at the wheel, right? Maybe some of those uh, things that have been um, uh, those those old institutions that have been kind of holding the world together seem to be crumbling in a lot of ways, right? Like the, uh, the democratic process. Uh, I mean, you, you could add so many things to that to that discussion. Uh, religion itself, I think, is probably having a, a really hard time. And not to say that those are necessarily you know uh, the good things, the bastion of all that's good or anything like that, but you know they are institutions that have held things together roughly for quite a long time now so i don't know i don't know uh, pretty crazy shit so so you're suggesting that m- maybe but it's not like we think is what you're saying right you've been able to kind of look into this through these meditative states yeah well i'm going to explain something else sure um you know how the grays when you get a, I mean, you don't you probably have you probably i don't know if you remember it or have been abducted or whatnot um because i got abducted like four nights ago again um, when they do a screen memory, okay, that means they're in your mind psychically and they're making you see something in your mind that does not exist or it's not there, okay? All right, now, um, years, and I, I think I've talked about this on your program before, but years ago I was in Lake Havasu City, Arizona, and, uh, you know, I was, I was seeing some stuff and through meditation, and I thought I was at this pool party there, and, and like I was so, so I got to around, Hey guys, guys, you know, I got to show you something. Cause it was new to me. I just thought, can I, can they see what I see? You know, kind of question that question to myself. So I sat down and went in a meditative state, kept my eyes open and lo and behold, the majority of the people there saw exactly what I was seeing. And it's not something that you would normally see. It's out. It's actually, I think it's from inside the body and it's projected out somehow. I don't know how it all works, but some of the people saw it. And they were continually seeing it after that for weeks after that, okay? So that means you opened up them psychically or you opened up the pineal gland, okay? Now, if we're able to do that, what I think is happening with the programs or let's say it's programs and whatnot and things are running amok, I think it's meant to run amok because I think the people who are developed enough who can show other people how to do this, okay, um, I think that's the way things are going to go. I don't, and I think it's meant to let go because it's, it's kind of like, um, you know, how people get attached to you and you feel like you're trying to, they're all, you know, you you know, they're around you and you're sort of like schooling them and counseling them, but it's through a friendship, but it's draining. Um, and then finally you grow up enough to like, you know, I got to like, oh, this is like too much. They're a leech and you get rid of them. Um, I think basically what's happening in the universe right now is the same thing. We're being let go. So it's time for us to learn on our own. It's time for us to do, not for someone else. And right now, I think politically, that's the draw. They're trying to hang on so hard to everybody and push them back down. I think some 60, 60, 70% of the people are going to go the other way and move on on their own. And there's going to be people that hang back. I think that's part of the programs. And that's how it's affecting people. And some people are like, you know, this is crap. You know, this is, you know they look at it like, uh-uh, not doing it. Um, and I think that's where we're headed. Now, the thing is, with people, because you mentioned somebody you saw, I, we talked about this before, um, but um, certain people that can see these things, because I know people that see the same thing I see, and they can see that, and then you can show other people that, um, you're going to start a collective consciousness, is what you're going to start doing. And people are going to start evolving a little quicker, because they've got something in their heads, like, you know, they see it like, oh, a little light bulb goes on. And because of that, they're going to be held back, conscious, not held back consciously, but they're going to sit back more and observe more and take it in slower and more, uh, what, what can I say, more discerning um, as things go on. That's how I see things going on. People get more discerning. The people who aren't going to discerning are just going to be the followers. They're, they're going to follow. That's it. Um, but if you can link psychically with somebody like that, and they start seeing that. If you can imagine putting all those people together that can do that, you know, um, they practice it because I'm I'm going through another process right now. Practice it, and then they get to the group of people who don't know it, and you've got this larger consciousness of you know people who can project the same thought and see the exact same thing. And then all these people who can't see it, they get into them psychically and raise their vibrations enough with this within this vibration. And then they can see it. You see, you're passing on, um, you know, you're opening up the consciousness more and more, I guess. I don't know how exactly, you know, how to say it, really. But 
um, it's, it's, it is and it's not. I just think we're very powerful beings, and let's say the extraterrestrials come in for abductions. Um, I don't think they're as powerful as we are. Okay. So, and, and, but it's a, but it's all sort of a, an internalized power, right? Something that we can uh, not just not just express as sort of a, an internal strength, but it also plays outside of us as well. Like you were saying, kind of projecting these things, sharing these experiences psychically and other things, right? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. That's that's amazing stuff. Um, so 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 you say no if if you're if you're a coin flipping here. So you don't think it's like we're describing. This is sort of like a concept that's maybe, uh, but it's not like computers and pixels. It's it's something a little bit different than that. No, it's not computers and pixels. We're we're too independent. Um, too many independent thoughts. It's like you know the, the old the old thing of if you're if you're. A tree falls in the forest, did anybody see it or hear it? No, because they weren't there. You hear a tree fall next to you, you see it, and it's going to be the same thing if you didn't hear it. You know, so, no, I, I, I can't get into that. Um, I think we are beings that are in our world or our vibration, you see. You ever see the movie, um, God, what was it? It was a miniseries, and I can't remember it now. Um, I think it was... Um, uh, what is a triangle? What's a, the triangle thing? Florida. Uh, what's it called? Uh, B- Bermuda Triangle. Yeah, it was a movie about that and how they tried to do this. If they changed the frequency in our in our world, it would have wiped everything out. And I think we're operating within our own frequency to understand our own world. But within that frequency, there's all these veils within this frequency that we haven't even experienced yet, and that's what you call ghosts, seeing a UFO, uh, this type of thing. And I think it's more along the lines of that, is operating within this frequency, but there's sub-frequencies and, and you know, upper frequencies and all kinds of stuff that we've not even tapped into yet. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Uh, so, so as usual... So I, uh, I think we operate on our own, but we're in this world to where, you know, there's electricity and all these things going on but i don't i don't see us being a simulation i don't that doesn't make sense to me gotcha okay uh, perfect stuff uh always amazing stuff from mj i appreciate the phone call you were the best uh, we got a phone call behind you we got a cut uh we'll talk to you soon have a great night brother we'll uh, hope everything's well for you all right thank you mike bye-bye Thanks a lot. There you go. Easy as that. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. Uh, any any uh, comment on that, Kelly? If you're there still, there, still there listening, I'm not sure. Let's check. And uh, yeah, it's still there. But uh, up to you, man. If you want to comment or not, uh, I'll give you a minute here so we don't leave you in silence for so long. <clears throat> no, he just made some interesting points about the pineal gland, right? When if you can open that up. And what's kind of interesting is we're, I was telling you about when me and Michelle were doing all that, well, a lot of that when we lived down in San Diego, you know, being on the beach and doing with sun gazing. That's the whole purpose of sun gazing was trying to open up the pineal gland. But that's when we started seeing like a little bit probably outside of our vibration. It was weird, man. It was, I don't know, people call it like, um, um, shadow people, or whatever, but we've seen these things like all the time. Like, I don't know, man, it was uh, weird. Another thing he, he talked about, he was talking about too, was like vibration you know, or frequency, right? So that, that, that's some, that's true too, because before, you know, people started making their music at, uh, 432 Hertz, I believe. But then, you know, the government's got together and they wanted to have all music, that's being played out on radio station that they sent out at uh, 440, which it does make a difference, man. Uh, if you heard music at, you know, at 432, you know, it's more easier on the ears and, you know, for the, actually for the human body itself. But uh, if they all, they all, right now, everything's coming out at 440, which is, you know, we're not, the body is not really, it's not really a good tune for us, like you say, 
Yeah, that, that's a whole show right there. We haven't actually touched that one yet, but I think we should at some point. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, so we got a phone call. We're going to go to that. Like I said, you're welcome to stay. And uh, uh, real quick, a shout out to Robert over on Rockfin again. Thank you for the tip. He says, uh, Michael blinked out again, like a simulation. Now, maybe, uh, maybe. Uh, Matt can vouch for me. Matt in California met me, and I am not a simulation. Well, maybe I am. But uh, I didn't blink out at dinner, so, well, at least I was able to hold it together for <laughs> so we'll call uh, 702-957-1037 we'll put you on the show let's go to joseph in iowa welcome to troubled minds my friend go right ahead hey so i want to touch on like a dream a dream i had or i have a lot it's about like i used to play a lot of baseball so like i'll have these dreams where a ball will just be flying at me and then I will snatch it like and and I will physically move when, when this happens because it, it's like one of those dreams that like mix into reality, you know? And I always thought like who is throwing that ball, you know, like that's kind of like a, like your dream state is kind of like a semi, a faster pace of your reality. You know, okay. Because you're running through all this stuff in your dreams, and I was thinking like maybe they can use. Maybe it feels like a simulation, or it can look like a simulation because we're like not actually here. We're in like a history class, or like this is kind of far. Like it, it could be an example, like a history class learning about like the cedars or like whoever you call them, like the cedars, the people who were the beginning. You know, because even if we can't save ourselves, maybe we could save some kind of thing that will make it somewhere else. I, I could easily see that being in our reach, sending out just like, okay, like this is it. What are we going to do? Might as well save whatever bacteria is going to survive anywhere and just put it all over. Like something like that. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Wild. So, so you think it's tied into the dream state somehow and that, uh, there's, uh, more shenanigans than we think. I, I think it is interesting that, right. When you get a lot of people kind of talking about these things is that, uh, there's so many angles, so many ways to look at this. And then, you know, we're not even talking like you can talk metaverse, which is a digital creation, right? Our digital creation. You can talk uh, simulation theory, which we're talking about tonight, which would mean all of us are some sort of sim- uh, simulated something or other. But then you also have this idea that we have dreams states that maybe are you know tied into all of this or like mj was saying right uh some sort of a maybe meditative process that can uh cut through some of that i don't know pretty wild stuff when it all comes together man. i'm i'm kind of thinking that this right now could be tech in a dream tech from some place i mean because your consciousness is making stuff and it's not you like if you go, if you were able to access your dreams right now, you would, it would be like accessing a whole nother, it would be like seeing another country for the first time because like your brain is like unique to yourself. You don't even know yourself really if you go inside your yourself. So I don't know. Yeah. They're wild stuff, man. Wild stuff. And uh, we agree 100% because I also do not know. <laughs> I wish I did, but I do not know. Uh, great stuff as always. Uh, what else you got for us, Joseph? Yeah, I mean, that's basically it. We could be like the fly <laughs> and being like the different time, different time, uh, like a fly. You ever seen like a fly? If you watch like a video on you, I think they have them on YouTube. It's like, what a fly sees and hears of a human and it's the freakiest thing like no wonder flies mess with us because like we're monsters <laughs> all those crazy yeah. eyes the different images all all bent and distorted and yeah we look like we look like the monsters don't we <laughs> yeah plus we move all slow like to them they're living like their whole lives out and we're barely moving and like what the heck <laughs> these guys are crazy creatures Just kind of grunting. locked out of sink and of time yeah yeah wild stuff wild stuff a uh, great great uh, great take on that perspective i appreciate it uh great shit as always joseph here has a youtube channel called hydro hose link in the description check it out always good stuff from you joseph have a fantastic night brother talk to you soon
Yep. There you go. 702-957-1037. Take on that, Kelly? Um, yeah, when he was talking about, uh, what was it? Um, oh, like the old saying, too. When he was talking about that, I, I was thinking what ran into my mind was the old saying where, I don't know, they even made a meme on it, but it goes something like this. Maybe when we die, we wake up and in our other world, you know, and in, in our other, it was just a dream. We're waking up from a dream when we die in this, in this world. Maybe it's everything. It's just, uh, I don't know. See, that's another thing too. If, if maybe that's the program, you know, like when you die here, you're just actually just waking up from a dream that you thought you died. Right. Or how about this one? You want a super mind fuck. How about we talked about like the, the um, uh, string theory in the multiverse and that, uh, you know, there's many iterations of us through, you know, multiple, even millions of universes and uh, us in particular. Uh, well, when one of us passes away from, you know, this reality, uh, you just wake up as uh, another part of yourself in another reality. <laughs> oh, oh, it gets weird. It gets weird. I would, you know, that's like, I don't know, man, I had that, I, I had talked about that time where I had that one dream and it was, it was a year. I had that dream every night for the, a year straight. And that's the one that kind of blows my mind. Cause I don't know, man, it was, it was weird. It was like a different life. And in the end I died, I got shot in the rib, but I remember waking up out of the dream and I was grabbing my side where I got shot and I could actually feel, literally feel the pain. I could like, I could feel the blood like coming through my fingers. I was crying, man. It was, it was weird. I have never, that, that shit blew my mind. So that's why I kind of thought about that as where, you know, I don't know, maybe is it just a, a I don't know what people would call a past life or is it just a, a glimpse of what was, or is it something that's going to happen? Or I don't know, man, maybe it was like you're saying, you know, the other part of us that died in the other, in the other uh, dimension or whatever, or the other world we were at. And then we got a, I got a taste of it. That was weird though, man. Cause that shit was real. I, it was so real. Oh man. I don't even know. It like, I couldn't, I couldn't even really say that I could, separate the two what i think reality is and what i was what i came out of that dream was yeah that's that's wild when they're so real but that's uh you swear that it was from another place and another time yeah that's so nuts <laughs> wild stuff wild stuff yeah that was a weird one but yeah Totally. Uh, some some good chat going over here on uh, on Rockfin. Uh, so just uh, just to point out to Tyser real quick too. I think that. Um, so let's see. Uh, real quick, let's go back and reading this. Uh, so Tyser says this: a simulation world would absolve me of ever taking full personal responsibility that would diminish who I know I actually am creating my reality every moment. I had a bad day and I made it uh, that way through a culmination of choices that didn't align. It's better now because I let myself be grateful. And yeah, grateful is a good thing. Like, uh, like I always joke, the upside down we live in that we, ha you know, we have, we peel out a day of the year, Thanksgiving to be grateful and thankful. <laughs> it seems so silly, but, uh, but I think also regarding like the, uh, and I've said this before, and I think, I think philosophically this seems to, to, to fit, is that uh, it doesn't matter uh, if we do live in a simulation, to my opinion, because, you know, we, we still uh, at some point have to be the best people we can be. We still have to learn. We still have to grow every day. We still have to try and not make stupid mistakes and you know, on and on and on. Right. And so I think even if, let's say you we were and just for the sake of conversation, we are in some sort of digital construct. I think it, I think that sticks. And so we just have to be the best programs we can be right within that programming parameter that is a human being. You know what I'm saying, Kelly? Yeah, because if, like, again, if you had the multiple lives, right? So it's always a being, you're, you're, it's a lesson, I guess, to be learned, you know? You're always trying to, it's, it's trying to gain vast knowledge, I believe. That's how I see it as, if, uh, uh, if, if it's multi-lives or whatever, or it's the reincarnation, or if it's just, you know, die and then you go into your other self, like we were just explaining, 
it's still a learning process. It's a, you're here for a reason, the reasons, you know, for me, you know, I don't know, maybe if you start at the bottom, you know, when people say that, you know, you're, and every life is just, uh, you know, you're supposed to learn better, learn more, be better, try to evolve, you know, that's the whole point of, I guess, the human species anyway, you know, that uh, as if you talk about evolution, then, you know, we're supposed to evolve, but into what, you know, and that's why I like the whole troubled mind, because this is what people flock to, man, and this is, it's what, you know, gives people, you know, made the thought of, you know, opening, you know, their pineal gland and, you know, express themselves as well. Exactly. Exactly. Like, uh, like, uh, said earlier, uh, by, I believe it was Brett, you know, it's, uh, these things, these things don't happen until we consider them possible and then other things become possible. Maybe not all things, but, uh, if you, if you never considered it, it could happen, then you're, you're shutting it out of happening to you. Right. So, yeah, I think, uh, I think there's a whole lot to that. Uh, Robert's making fun of me again over there saying Mike blinked out again. Yeah, just a webcam on the Fritz, guys. I don't know what the hell's going on. It's not the cam itself. It's the software. It's, uh, it's glitching out. So, I don't know. I'm going to have to try and figure this out. Uh, thanks, MJ, for the phone call. Uh, thanks, Joseph, for the phone call. Thanks, Kelly, for being here with us tonight and uh, spending the final hour with us. Uh, really, really good stuff from, from everybody, as usual. Uh, we're, like I said, our embarrassment of riches, our cup runneth over with so many amazing troubled minds uh, congregating and talking about amazing things uh real quick uh shout out to penny in the uk i uh, hope you're feeling well it says uh, sorry not well um uh, prayers uh, f- frequency vibration whatever it is you believe uh, to you uh ho- get well soon uh thanks for spending uh spending some time with us even if you're not feeling well and uh shout out to uh, again tysa again for the bad day uh, don't worry he didn't deserve you and uh that's that let's wrap this sucker what else, what do you got kelly as we finish this sucker up well for me, it's just, you know, like, that's why we're here again. That's why we're here. You know, we're trying to all, I'm here for, for knowledge, man. And, and the thirst for knowledge, friendship, and what we can obtain together as a community. And as we can be, I guess what we could say is become as one again, you know? And, uh, that's why we're here. That's why I come here, man. I'm a troubled mind and, uh, hope to see, and I'm glad to see, uh, different callers and stuff, you know, giving different takes. Now some of the, some of these guys are pretty incredible. I, I enjoy it, and I uh, hope to hear more of them. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. We're going to keep on doing it. So the bad news is, ladies and gentlemen, we're done. The good news is, God willing, we've got tomorrow, and that one's for uh, Jay in New York out there. That's his favorite. Uh, that comes from my grandmother. She she used to say that all the time. Uh, she would say hasta mañana. Uh, see ya. We, we should see you tomorrow in Spanish and uh, God willing is what she'd always say so that's uh, that's from uh, from Grandma Strange and so uh, as we finish uh, if you guys love the show I appreciate it had lots of lots of new folks kind of uh, finding us I, I, I dig how people are finding us uh, in all kinds of different places right there's always the idea if you stream in so many places then people can find you in all of those places and that's the idea and it's working it's working so thanks for finding us thanks for spending your time with us guys gonna play some outro music and do this let's uh, GTFO. So if you do like the show, please spread the word. Just spread the word. That's like, again, uh, the old, that's how we beat the algorithms, the old school, uh, just uh, uh, word of mouth. It still works. It still absolutely works. And actually, before we do that, let's play this last clip just to kind of uh, round this out. And uh, we'll play this real fast, which is the final little uh, thing I snipped out from that conversation between Neil deGrasse Tyson and uh, uh, the Professor Hall. Uh, what was it? I can't remember his name. <laughs> I can't. I keep forgetting the guy's name. Anyway, here we go. Part Part four, this is the last bit of it, just like a minute or so. And this is them kind of winding up that conversation regarding uh, what, uh, what a simulation and possibly the code in the universe might look like. Here we go. And that's how you get accurate transmission of digital data. Among the codes that are used for this purpose are a special class of codes that are called block linear self-dual error correcting codes. They were first, in fact, the Shannon uh, extended checksum code is an example of one of these things. These are the codes that we find buried in the equations. Not just any code, but these self-dual error correcting block codes. It's quite remarkable for anyone that I've talked to. We have no idea what these things are doing there. Any literature out? I'm sorry? Do you have any literature out that... I can give you technical references that almost nobody in the world can understand. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I thought you had a popular level article I, on this? Thank you. Yes, actually, in, so this past June, 
The British journal Physics World asked me to write a popular level description of what we have found. So in the June edition of Physics World, and it's, a, it's published in London, the cover story is called Symbols of Power. It's about these weird symbols that have been showing behind us. We, we call these things adinkras. And so the, for a popular level description, yes, we've written that. But other than this one popular level description, it's all technical gobbledygook. Wonderful. And that's a technical term, by the way. <laughs> gobbledygook. Thank you. There you go. Technical gobbledygook. It was too good to leave out. I had to add that because at the end of that's super funny. Yeah, I could, I could uh, give you some literature, but nobody would understand it. <laughs> Perfect. Well said, sir. All right. So, uh, so I was finishing winding this up. Uh, like I said, if you love the show, uh, please spread the word. Uh, old school word of mouth still works. We can beat the algorithms the old school way. And uh, thank you again for spending your time and energy with us. It means a lot. If you want to help us uh, with uh, monetary means, you can do that again. You can do that on Rockfin. Thank you again to all the all the tips over there on Rockfin tonight. I appreciate that very much. Uh, you could also sub up to Rockfin directly through our channel. The links in the description. Sub up to Twitch. Uh, there's a Patreon. If you like the show, but you don't like the show, or or you're not in a space uh, to to send some money, then just listen to the podcast feed. That's uh, that's the easiest way to help us because uh, there's some ads baked in into uh, into that situation. And every time you listen to uh, a podcast uh, on the podcast feed, that would be Spotify or iTunes or anything like that. It sends a few my way so i uh, appreciate that thank you guys for uh, again all the amazing thoughts all the amazing calls it uh, it does make my world go around and uh it's it's realizing a dream that it's realizing a dream a dream that was troubled minds before there ever was a troubled minds so thanks for being part of this journey with me guys and uh i'm honored you spend your time with us because that's the most important thing your time and your energy and everybody have a great night thank you again to kelly and everybody else for being part of this and uh let's gtfo play some music and roll it as you know this thing goes uh we do monday through thursday 7 p.m pacific go for approximately three hours and uh the third hour is for you the third hour is uh just where we kind of let our hair down and talk about all kinds of crazy shit and here we are at the end of that talking about all kinds of crazy shit and uh there we go so let's get the hell out of here and uh well what what do we leave i don't think there's anything left to add other than thank you thank you thank you thank you appreciate it Kelly, have a great night, brother. Yes. Tell Michelle we said hi, and uh, always a pleasure, my friend. Hey, just real quick, that was uh, his name, James Gates. James Gates, thank you, thank you, appreciate that. I keep I keep trying to find his name, and I can't. It's it's like buried in one of these articles. But yeah, thank you very much for uh, winding that out. And uh, everybody else, you know what to do, including you, Kelly. Have a great night. Uh, the deal is like this. It ends like this. With the camera still working, be sure... Be strong, be true. Thank you for listening. From our troubled minds to yours, have a great night.